Hello and welcome to another episode of Rime of the Frostmaiden here on Dork Tales. I'm your Dungeon Master Kelly and tonight joining me are my four fantabulous players uh, whose party still doesn't have a name now that I think about it, yep. but uh, are, yeah, are joining me from all portions of the West Coast. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and start in, uh, let's just go in chronological order. Uh, circular order, we'll go circular order, that's like a, that's like a clock. Uh, hello, Christine. Hi, I'm Christine, and I'm playing Callie Thornhill, the halfling druid. Hello, Hayden. Hello, I'm Hayden Davio. Um, I'm playing Lysithian Callisto, the moon elf wizard. Hello, Robin. Good eye. <laughs> I'm Vistra Donkio, the uh, mountain dwarf barbarian. And hello, Mike. Hey, guys. I'm Mike. I'm playing Katarina Firestring, our human bard in the group. I, I was really hoping you were going to accidentally say that you were playing Xeno right wing, and I was like, <laughs> yeah! Do it. Do yeah, it. Uh, yeah, that, that's that's true. I wouldn't the, be surprised. The game would be much easier with like a level 10 ranger. That. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, what do you do? Oh, 110 damage. Oh, okay, everyone's dead. Everyone's <laughs> dead, including you. You shot yourself. That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah I did um, that once. You did. It was hilarious. Um, all right. So hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode. This is episode three of Rime of the Frost Maiden. Uh, for those of you tuning in for the first time, the basic story is that in the realm of Icewind Dale, cold has settled across the land and the sun has not been seen in many years. Before Oral, the Frost Maiden, a goddess of cold and freezing death, has brought icy slumber to this land those who have been trapped inside of icewind dale or do not have the means to escape have eked out a miserable existence trying to please oral enough that she will uh, drop this awful spell this party is a group of adventurers who were brought together uh, on several early quests including um fighting a well not fighting befriending a, um, a dinosaur uh, going and killing a murderer, and now they are traipsing across about half of Icewind Dale uh, in hopes of rescuing their new friend Garrett from a treacherous mountain climb by um, by request of his husband and their adorable dog, Boy. Boy! All right. Uh, so, anybody have any questions before we begin? No. None at all. None nope. at all? No, that's all. all right. Uh, so a reminder, everybody, you're going to be starting with one point of inspiration. Uh, you can spend that at any time in order to give yourself advantage Here to remove you. disadvantage from your character or to grant advantage to another player on the team. Use it wisely. You get one and you might get another one later if you if you make me really happy. Um, do something cool. All right. Uh, so everybody in the chat, good to see you there. And uh, good to see everybody who's watching us on YouTube. Those views have been phenomenal. And they're really um, in the middle of the depression of 2020. It's really fantastic to see all of the wonderful comments you've been leaving. And um, and just all of the happiness. They say never go to the comment section, but like you guys make it easy. Um, true. It's true. It's so nice. Like there was some good stuff about you, Mike. You should go read it. It's uh, true. Hayden always has good stuff about them. So it's it's pretty... Pretty easy for them. <laughs> All right. So, you depart, heading south from Targos. At this point, are you all on foot? I'm assuming Probably. you are. Probably. Yeah, I think, I think so. We were. Trudging through the dimness of this early afternoon the four of you and the large dog in tow who keeps casting furtive glances toward the faster route that it took to get here from Kelvin's cairn which in the dimness you couldn't even begin to see you all know that on foot it's a full day's travel maybe more but a Brinchander 
the largest city inside of Icewind Dale, you might have a chance of acquiring something that'll get you there faster. And one moment, let's see how lucky you are. No, oh, not too bad. All right. Uh, it takes only a few hours of trudging. Your snowshoes thick upon your feet. By the time you see the round silhouette of Bryn Shander's sturdy walls, there is a bit of frost creasing at the corners of your eyes and along the exposed hair and flesh on your face. Vistra, in particular, you will have a bit of frost embedded in your the chin of your beard. It's cold. And with that, you'll step up a rise and we'll see Bryn Shander stretching out before you. Uh, now for those of you who don't know, Bryn Shander is usually the first stop for those who go to Icewind Dale. It's a walled town perched on a lonely, cold, and wind-lashed hill. Bright lanterns suspend over narrow streets that twist in the wind and add flecks of color to the town's otherwise drab surroundings. It's large, um, about two and a half thousand feet from wall to wall in a circle. It has three gates, the north gate, east gate, and southwest gate. You're approaching from the north. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Callie, you're pretty familiar with Bryn Shander, and I think all of you have been through here at one point. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I've hung out in Bryn Shander fairly often. Okay. All right. So, as you approach, you will see that the walls loom overhead. In the dimness, there is no shadow that they're casting. They're just an imposing blot on the horizon. And as you approach the front doors, you can see that even though it is still daylight, well, even the dimness of what it passes for daylight these days, lanterns are lit out front, dangling and swinging on the blistering wind. The walls loom 30 feet overhead, and atop them you see a pair of guards huddled in thick cloaks. They don't appear to notice you as you approach. What do you do? <laughs> That's what I said. No, you are didn't. I heard open? you. Uh, the are gates are closed? shut. Going to huh. just approach. Good Oi! evening. Who goes down there? I'm going Travelers. to cast light. Uh, mm. um. Open the gate! We've got travelers! A moment later, you hear the grind of the wooden doors. And a moment later, a, a human woman steps out dressed in guards' clothing. All right, come on in before you let all the cold out. Yes, because you know, we'll there's so rush much on in. Cold, It's a joke. So little cold. Sure, <laughs> right. Money. All right, all right. Come on, come on. Um, As you come in, she'll wave for them to shut the door behind you. And uh, the chains will pull it shut. Once inside, she'll look you over. Not your first time to Bryn Shander? No. No. No, no. I'll well, unwrap you... the scarf from around my head and face. <laughs> and I'm sure I've met a good chunk of the guards by now. See. Uh, actually, you have. You know this human in particular is a guardsman named uh, Tabitha Deladon. Um, she's a pretty plucky, young, early 20s um, human woman with uh, kind of a, a pretty but slightly severe face with a strong jawline and piercing gray eyes. I'll you think she's a wrap my, my scarf and kind of go, yeah, oh, hi, Tabby. Oh, hey, Callie, good to see you here. Yeah, good to see you. Freezing uh, your arse off on guard duty, huh? Always drawing the, str the long straws, I am. Uh, any news from North? Um, oh, there is uh, always something different. 
I heard tell of a monster over in Bremen. Oh, oh we took care of yeah, that. Hell. Yeah, we took yeah. care of that. And they were you really not it? that much of no, no. We would never. Well, you said you took care of it, so I just assumed. No, 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 no. no we took no, care Kathy, of it in a way I'm that we became friends. friends. Oh, of course you would. Uh, it's lovely. So what was it? Like a a whale or a, a dinosaur? Plesiosaurus. One moment. But it was big. Yeah, yeah, very big. Okay. I eat you in one bite, big. Her name was Mary. Mary. Interesting. Well, thanks. That'll be a good story to tell around the fire tonight. Uh, you guys probably don't need any help getting around town, so if you need anything, I'm here until third watch. Thanks. Um, cute dog. <laughs> Boy will bark up. He's lovely. He's a very good boy. His name is Boy. How inventive. I didn't right? name him, but they agree. Oh, okay, fair. Uh, all right. Where's the best place to uh to get some from Feast Travel? Where uh where could you? Uh, I'd head down to the the stables if I were you. Down to the southwest gate. Kelly. Uh yes, Katarina. Uh, we're coming into the north gate, right? You're coming into the north gate, yes. So, okay, cool. uh, actually, if you are popping open a roll 20 right now, what I can do is I will... Actually, you're already on it, so you can look down at the map of Bryn Shander there. Okay, so yeah, we can just continue down the main the, the main path and then mm -hmm. take a right to go down to the stables. Cool. Absolutely. Uh, so, do you do that? Do you depart, leaving Tabitha behind? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll bleed a... You know, I'm, I'm probably as familiar as Callie is with uh, with Brent Shannon. I've probably performed here tons of times. Probably. Uh, Callie you... will linger slightly to flirt with Tabby for following up. Okay, of course. Uh, as you are lingering, uh, Boy is going to stay with you. And as you finish flirting and talking about various things, um, well, I was, uh, after I get off tonight, uh, if you should, um, we should go out for a drink and you should tell me all about this. Uh, I'm gonna be probably at the North Look. Alrighty. Be good to see you. Good to see you too. And, uh, as you start to go away, um... I'm assuming the dog stayed with me. The dog whines and looks back at the gate. I'll pet him and just pull. It, it's too far to go tonight. Can you give me an animal handling roll? Twenty-four. Twenty-four. The dog seems to understand the gist of what you're saying and is exhausted. Um, as soon as let's you... get a good dinner and we'll set out first thing tomorrow. The ear rockets skyward at the mention of dinner. Uh, <laughs> and dinner, boy? You want dinner? <laughs> and with a bit m less pep than you've seen boy have, uh, he'll begin to kind of, not limp, but trudge along next to you with the motion that says each of his paws must weigh about a half ton each. The dog has ran about 15 hours today. Yeah. The fact that he's still alive is quite impressive, to be honest. I'm going to mm. make sure he's got a good meal. And then, before I go to sleep tonight, just try and make sure, like, that he's all healed up. Okay. If need be, I'll use a spell. That works. Okay. So, he's going to keep with you, and you'll make it um, right behind the rest of your party. Uh, what are you looking around and doing, Vistra and Lysinthian? Or are you just heading straight down toward the stables? I'm just going to go towards the stables. I don't really need any dinner or anything. Okay, fair. So, uh, and Vistra? Uh, she probably accompanies Lysinthian and then uh, once, you know, later she'll go head to the pub and get a pint or several. Uh... As you make it about halfway down toward the village, or pardon me, the city square, uh, there will be that noise, the... We've got blades here! 
We've got blades, we've got picks, we've got everything you need over here. Come down to Black Iron Blades! We're having a sale on right now. 5% off! So you can take 5% off each of your enemies. Each of the monsters. Each of the things that dwell in the dark. Five off for five off. Very good advertising. And, uh, let's, let's have a little breeze. You're gonna stop I mean, there, okay? Uh, I would like all. Th I would like everyone who's stopping at Black Iron Blades, though, to make me a uh, charisma plus history roll. So basically, swap your charisma for your int and make a history roll. Natural twenty. Okay, so this is gonna be great. All right. Okay, so plus 18. my charisma, which is 18. not amazing, so it's going to be plus one plus twenty four. 24? Plus history. Okay, that's going to be 27. And Vistra, you got a three? Oh, no. Okay. Oh. Vistra, uh, oh, no. as you wander over, this it's a combination shop and smithy that stands just north of the main square. Um, a large shield dwarf um, is working the forge right now. And um, the one who was speaking was actually a dwarven woman. Uh, who is calling out and banging on things and basically just trying to rouse people over. It looks like business has been a little slow. But, you know what? Having some ice picks, other equipment, might not be a bad idea. However, uh, the other three of you, as you approach, uh, Black Iron Blades is not a place you want to buy anything. Uh, you know that Garn the Hammer... <laughs> the man who works the hammer, uh, manufactures the cheapest blades in the ten towns, even without that 5% discount. <laughs> and uh, his smithcraft is passable. He can sure make a horseshoe and some nails. Uh, however, <laughs> buying a sword off of him led to a lot of jokes about hapless newcomers heading to Icewind Dale, uh, finding being found dead in snowdrifts with the punchline... And they're Worst holding a black iron blade. That is exactly right. And he was carrying a black iron blade to boot. It's basically like a curse of death to have that. Uh, I thought you're left. Good swords. Good swords here. Uh, I've no, got good swords. Good. Would you like to come and get some swords? Ah, oh, Blue, I've seen you before. Come on over, she says. No, I, I'm, I'm all right. Thank you very much, though. I, I'm just looking for... um. Just transportation. It's well, a don't, we're just passing through. Ladies and gentlemen, look how excited our customers are. This one's been holding their breath all day to get here. Come on down and buy. That's a little bit racist. And they walk away. Well, guys, guys, why not? We can do better elsewhere. We can do now, much well, better. I seem literally to remember that they were else. okay at other stuff, though. And they just didn't want to trust their blades. Not possible. Trust at our anything, blades. Kelly. Of course, you can trust our blades. Our blades. Not possible are... at anything. And I walk away. <laughs> it's racist against her. Dwarfs. She's a little. Uh, she's a little abrupt. I'm gonna lean into this drag kind of Lean, lean down. Yes. Lean down. Their blades are crap. Really? Yeah. Don't buy them. Mm. Oh. Now you must be thinking of our old stock. Our new stock is. The finest. Their the trade shiniest. books are okay, though. Just uh, hey, Smithcraft. Ugh. Can I heat something with it? And if it breaks, it's shit. But if it's not, I'll buy it. Absolutely. Here, take... Uh, and she'll fumble around underneath the counter. Here, try this one. She'll hand you a short sword. Can I make an antique? Sure, there's a shield nearby, as well as a wooden post. Go ahead. All right. Um, well, That would just be more regular, like, yeah, just regular attack. 21? 21. Uh, you are going to embed uh, the short sword about mm, three inches into the wooden cusp of the shield. Does it break? No, it's fine. Sign's pretty good. I'm like not I quite said, a swordsman myself. Like I said, uh, new stock, far better than our old stock. We uh, we don't got, want to be that. Got tired of all the bad advertising. Unfortunately, we were getting ran out of business by uh, competitors, uh, harming our uh, Smith supplies. 
That's old news, though. Insight Come on check? In. Uh, yeah, please. Yes, can I also insight check on this? Are you just kind of okay. hanging on the other side of the square, listening in from a distance? Or are oh, you... yes. Okay. No, I'm you just ahead? listening in. Uh, so I know, I it's got... not a very good... It's a... Uh... Well, he's just going to give him a glare. I got a 19 for inside. Uh, well, let me just ask you this question quick. Katarina, how good did that lie sound coming out of my mouth from the way I roleplayed it? Because I don't think it was particularly convincing in real life. No, it was And it's it less convincing in the game. Lysithian, you're not quite sure. You're not quite sure. Maybe, maybe they're a little better now. She she seems like she has a plausible explanation, but she's probably, she's just, she's a jerk. <laughs> Honey, you're not going to be able to fool us, okay? Just don't try. Well, we're here if you have supplies, if you need supplies. Got any All jerky right. in recently? Yeah, I've got jerky. Awesome. Looks like you've brought all the jerky I need, though. She'll gesture to Lysithian again. <laughs> <laughs> Callie, will, Callie will just giggle. And I'm not racist against elves. Just blue ones? Moon elves. That sounds a little bit racist. Hallie will lean in and just kind of go, She's a little sensitive. Mm. Can we go somewhere oh, better? Okay. Or are you going but to shop? I've heard great night? things about your trade goods. Just not your swords. So... I'm not going to be in one of those stories. Been here too long for that. That would just be embarrassing. All right. Well, uh, if you're purchasing things, I would love to help you out with this 5% discount. Otherwise, I think your friend's leaving. That's fine. I think Vistra's going to pull out her clan crafter uh, little piece of paper that she has and kind of hand them over and be like, so where's your, uh, your, your good supply of stuff? I'm also a filler uh, crafter. Yeah, what do you craft? I craft, uh, nothing, you know, metal. I craft more of a liquid, uh, form of brew. Yeah? You ever uh, heard of, uh, my brewery? Out of East Haven? Maybe? Mad Mountain Dwarf? Brewing Co? Nope. Should I? You should. I'll make the fire spear. Uh, do you have any on you? I think Mr. Wood. I don't know if my DM will allow me. Uh, you know what? I'll roll to see if you have any on you right now or if you drank it during a celebration. So uh, <laughs> That's a we'll, valid question. We'll, it's say, it's it's cool. we'll say you have a 30% chance of, of having some stock on you. I rolled exactly 30. So yeah, you have one bottle left. Sweet. You almost didn't though. It was almost not there. I think she's she she pulls out her bottle and uh, hands it over. All right, what do you charge for this normally? What's the reasonable uh? Should do more research. Uh, what, what, what do you? What what do you probably probably about five silver for okay. a, like a specialty art or artisanal yeah. craft thing. Well, five silver. Uh, that's a lot. Um, what do you uh, What do you need? We can do a little bit of a tradesy. Well, uh, we're about to go into a a, a mountain to a far rescue mission. So, uh, you know, things like pickaxes to uh, help us climb cliffs or whatnot would be uh, some mountain climbing gear. If you yeah, I can do that. Like that. I can do some of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see, pickaxe, pickaxe. Uh... I mean, I can give you all the pittens you need for the bottle. So that'll be... I can give you hmm, 25 pittens. Okay. I'll give you uh, 20 pittens. 20 pittens. The five is... Yeah. I'll give you 20 pittens for it. All right. That seems reasonable. Uh, a, a pick normally runs uh, two gold. And okay. uh, besides that, y'all have rope. Uh, no, I don't have any. Rope. I actually don't. Does anybody no, have a dungeoneer's I... kit or? Uh, I have an did... explorer's pack. So explorer's, explorer's kit, kit does have some rope. 
It only yeah. has like one length of it, but no, I I'm gonna stock up on jerky like, and pittance spells, like spell components. Get yeah, me some I'm... shitty rope, eh? Excuse me, Lois Indian. I don't think it's shitty. Well, I mean, it's elven rope, so it probably is. True. <laughs> yeah, true on that. Eh? But at least it's the it. at least it's the color it's supposed to be. Um, so hemp rope is going to run you a gold per fifty feet. Now that was a bit rude to my friend. Well, I like the jesting about the eels because I also feel like that. But the the color a bit much. Yeah. Just saying. Just I'm saying. Going I'm going to cast Minor Illusion from okay. my hand. <laughs> oh and I'm my going god. To listen. No, it's a, it's not a sound this time, but it's just making words above their, their stall. Okay. It's shittiest products ever. Uh, Racist. As, <laughs> as you do that, um, you are going to feel a little tug at your side. And... Oh. Uh, Tugging on your robe, there is a an elderly gnomish man who looks up at you. Hello. He narrows his eyes at you through his half moon spectacles perched on his bulbous nose. Can I help you? Nice. And he'll hold his hand up. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Ah. They were being uh, they were being rude to the fact that I am a moon elf, and uh, they don't deserve good business after that. Even though they are taking my friends. Beer I and it's not you. <clears throat> oh, they're just dicks in general. Oh, well, they're all—they're definitely dicks. But her ex-girlfriend was a moon elf. Do you Read know what she looked like? Um, well, not like you. Um, okay. uh, I mean, like, kind of like you. I mean, you're a moon elf, so mm, yes. theory. Uh, well, that dice is never coming back again. <laughs> I heard that leave. No, no. It, it left the it left my body. My soul <laughs> left my body. Um, about five foot seven, blue skin, obviously. Uh, same eyes as you, but kind of a more of a more of an oval face. Um, you know, she was okay. Uh, right. Went by uh, Thessarella, Thessamina. Thessarella, okay. Thessie something. Vessi. All right. What? What's your name? Huh? I'm Grant. What? Grant. Right. Grant. Good to meet you. Grant. Yeah. No. Good to meet I you said, too. I I'm Lysithian. Nice Ly to meet you. Lysithian. I I heard you the first time. I'm okay. I'm half blind, not half deaf. I'm sorry for offending. That was not my intention. Ah, that's their job. See you later, mm -hmm. Lysithian. And he'll right. walk Goodbye. off, hobble on his cane. Good to know. <laughs> And uh, to... uh, sorry. No, I was just going to file that information for later. All right. So um, while well, they're all doing that, I'm just going to start wandering over towards the stables. Okay. All right. Are is anybody? Are you buying anything, Vista? Or are you just still making deals? Uh you know what? Uh, I'm. I think I'll, I might come back and uh, I mean, I'll take the tw I'll take the twenty pittance from you right now for the beer. Yep. All right. She'll um, pass them over. But uh, uh, I'll come back, see if Ooh. if they're actually telling the truth or not. Um, but I would just like to support a fellow dwarf business. So uh, I might come back, but uh, uh, I'll hold off on the pickaxes for now. All right. Uh, that sounds fine. I think. <laughs> All right. So with that, uh, do the rest of you just follow after Katarina? Yeah. No, mm -hmm. I'm just going to head towards the stables. All right. Uh, I think uh, Vistra I... walks up to Lysinthia and said, oh, I'm really sorry about that. Oh, they're kind of dicks. No. No. Oh, Is that the dwarf bit. thing? Well, you, the, the little. We are, we're a little unsure of eels. We're not quite familiar with you guys as much. We're more familiar with our keeflings and humans. So, no, like, I'm... this is a thing. I'm not really that familiar with dwarves, but I don't go out of my way to be a total douche about it. But yeah, no, they were a bit dicks. I, I, I said it, 
I tried something for free beer and stuff like that, but yeah, why would you? It was kind of rude. Why would you give them anything? Cause free, and I was gonna drink my beer anyway. So like, at least I got something out of it instead of into me. You know. I feel like that was uh, stupid, but that's just my opinion. But yeah. I hope you enjoy your shitty rope of what that. I didn't get rope. I just got the pins. Hmm. I feel like we could have bought something better somewhere else, but yeah. it's neither here nor there. Yeah. So, Anyways, and how about we just continue on down to the stables and see what we can find there? Eh, true. Yeah. Before long, you'll find yourself right in front of the stables near the south gate. It's, um... Stables is a weird term for this, of course, because traditionally you would assume that it would be a lot of hay, a lot of horses, but in this case, it's the sound of yapping dogs and the sound of scratching. Long scratching in the snow and dirt that's been cleared away inside of these stables, heated by a central fireplace at the back of the main stable building. The walls are enclosed. And uh, you can hear all of this through the wall, as well as the smell of dogs and fowl. As you approach, there is a uh, uh, there's a little bell at the front for you to ring. Bing. All right. A moment later, uh, a human man in his uh, in his mid forties will wander up. He's uh, smoking a pipe and trying to stay warm inside of his parka. Yeah. What can I do for you? We're looking for some transportation. Yeah, all right. Well, I got I got some stuff. Uh, what kind of transportation are you looking for? Well, we need to get... Um, let me just pull up the name of the place again. Uh, we are going to Calvin's Cairn. Hmm. And, you know, it's going to take us an awfully long time to get there on foot. So yeah. we need something that's going to expedite the process a little bit. Well, I don't know about that, but I got stuff that can go fast. That sounds exactly like what we need. Perfect. All right. Uh, I've got... Let me take a look at my inventory and watch book death. Uh, I've got two axe beaks right now. Uh, right now, they're going for 50 gold each. Okay. Uh, and that's the purchase price, of course. Uh, and then, uh, as you can hear, uh, I've got ten sled dogs over there in the corner. Uh, they're all good. Um, now, how many of you need to travel? Is it all four of you? And you, it looks like you it's, already have a dog. It's the four of us and a dog. Hmm. Well, you probably would want a sled, but the sled only pull so much the calculation is roughly that for every uh, how much do you weigh each of you you're probably about about 100 and it's hard to tell with the park probably about 150 and probably about 140 for you he'll point his finger at you Lysanthian uh, mm. probably about 180 with the uh, with the weapons points at Vistra I ain't gonna hazard to guess on the halfling, but I'm gonna say probably not much. So... You're gonna want at least, uh... You're gonna want at least two sleds. How many dogs press sleds? Press sled. Uh, two dogs will be able to take you. Uh, more dogs will be able to make it uh, easier on them. Uh, but for your weight, if you separate yourselves out into one rider and one driver and make it the light, the lightest possible by calculating the, the difference between your weights, uh, you can probably just do two and two, two with each. And how would, um, speed wise, how would, how would an axe beak compare? Now, axe beaks, axe beaks are good. Uh, but they ain't got the same stamina as dogs. Uh, that's the thing. Axe beaks, uh, for what you're asking for, um, you, you dogs are better over long terrain. You got to rest them for a few minutes every hour just to let them get a chance to recuperate. Uh, but then it's just, they're off again. They got plenty of energy. Axe beaks, 
are uh, they're they're what we call speed predators. They're they're chasers, right? So if you're going for an hour or two hours, they're fine. But you take them out in the cold for anything more than about five hours, you run them too hard, you risk falling over dead. Good to know. Well, they're originally from a very tropical climate. The fact that they do bouquet in here is just kind of a freak of nature. But hey, this is, uh, this is last one day. We got freaks of nature all over the place. Yeah, tell me about it. Um, so would we rent the dogs from you or buy them? Uh, well, uh, you'd, you'd buy them. Uh, how, how much per dog and for a sled? Uh, so a dog sled, uh, a dog sled is, uh, 20 pieces of gold, uh, and it's 50 gold pieces per dog. And they're worth their That's... weight in gold. I'm sure they are. And the axe beaks? Uh, axe beaks are 50 gold each, but like I said, uh, they can't okay. transport anything, really. They can transport you, and if you run them too hard, they, they do get sick. They do have congenital defects in their in, in one of their heart valves. Right. Can't wait. We're trying to breed that out. Yeah. Uh, what is this guy, you know, like, is, is, is he like an old guy? I can't remember if you said before. He's in his 40s. He basically, I'm basically doing Woody Harrelson. So, like, he's basically Woody Harrelson. <laughs> Fair enough. I got him to guest star tonight. It's fine. Uh, I mean, that's that's accurate. I just watched all of True Detective in one day, so that's that's what that's what it is. That's fair, right? No, mm. it was okay. Would I know from just life experience of two hundred years? Um, is this generally the the price of like dogs and dog sleds? Mm, you can go ahead and make me an insight roll. I'm going to try this dice and hopefully. I'm gonna <laughs> wait until I see what Lysithian okay. gets, and then not I'm gonna bad, do mine. Bad. Uh, it's going to be 16. Okay. Uh, and Mike, what were you wanting to do? Did you want to do a roll? Uh, I was going to wait until I see the result of Lysithian's roll. Like, well, see, that's see not what... the way the group checks work. <laughs> I, was I like, wasn't that's... doing a group check. Uh, yeah. Because uh, that was for that was for an insight check, wasn't it? That was yeah, for an no, insight check. Yeah, I was check, rolling yeah. insight. And if you want to assist me, then I roll with advantage. Oh, okay. Yeah, I may as well. Uh, that, yeah, that wasn't what I was going to do, but... Oh, then what were you going to uh, do? That's not a... didn't pass anyways. But what were you going to do then? Because it, it wasn't the same role, so... No, no, I was... I well, I, I needed to wait until I saw what, you know, okay. what Lysithian found. Uh, so Lysithian, it seems fair. Like, it's it's about right. Um, sled costs about that much. Um, dogs cost about 50, 50 gold. All right. Um, it's, it's expensive, but it's worth it. Yes, we may have to. Uh, you ain't got that much coin on you. No, I, I have, I have it's... enough probably for the sled. I think. Mm, um, no, not for if the I... At at this point, um, Katarina is going to, like, scooch up right beside her and be like, "So, I mean, it is a lot of gold." And, you know, we're just, uh, you know, we're, just, we're trying to go help a friend. So, is there anything that you could do? Anything you need? To maybe cut us a deal? Make me a persuasion roll. Also, I mean, we're not planning to keep them. We'll probably sell them back to you in the end. Uh, persuasion... That is going to be a 19. Uh, I can probably give you a discount. Or how much you got on you. Okay, so you said it was going to be 50 gold per dog and 25 for the sleds. Yeah, right? it'd, be about, it'd be about 240 gold. How about... Of course, you'll get some of that back if you bring the dogs back. Naturally. As long as they're in good shape. How 
how about 175 gold and I'll take you out for a drink tonight? Yeah, you're a real pretty lady. Do you have a wife? Uh, not anymore. Oh, but, okay. Uh, I was going to say I can take her out too. Ah, uh, well, that'd be sweet of you. Yeah. I don't think either of us, even when she was alive, had a piece of ash that cost 75 gold. Um, so I will throw in uh, 20 gold pieces. Um, <laughs> Sorry, Mike. <laughs> and an extra five silver for us to never talk about your ass again. Yeah, yeah we can do that. So 20 gold from me. I will cover the sled if the sled was 20 gold. 25. 25. You, what? you know what? I will cover the sled fully. You got a uh, uh, another sled. I'm I have thirty gold, so I could I could buy the other sled. Uh, well, ho hold on a sec. As you were saying, are you gonna? Uh, it's not a bad idea. I would I wouldn't mind not uh, not giving you too much of a discount. But it seems to me, uh, your halfling there has a has a dog too. Well, hell, you don't need to buy four dogs if you already got one. You know, we were only going to buy three, so. Well, that's not what we were negotiating a second ago. That's why I quoted you 240. Yes, well. just, um, he's not my dog. Well, he's hanging so off I... you like he's your dog. Yeah, 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 but his How you doing, boy? owner's in trouble. And he came and got us for help. Huh. So I imagine once we go find the owner... He's gonna need him on his sled. You, uh. That's boy. Yeah, it is boy. Yeah. You're friends with Garrett. Yeah, yeah that's who we we're going to find. I met him just the other day. I gave him boy when he was a puppy. Yeah. He said he was going out to, uh, yeah. the carn, and, uh, boy came back yelping about Yetis. Hmm. Huh. So, we need to get there fast. All right. Well, with only three dogs, that would be a hundred and hundred and ninety. What do you well, say to one hundred fifty? And she still takes you out for a drink. I think that'd be fair at one hundred and sixty. One hundred and sixty, and when you bring the dogs back, I'll give you. We'll say that if you're back inside of a week. Uh, I'll refund you all, but about five gold each. That seems fair. That sounds lovely. Yeet. All right. Uh, so, all right. so 150 plus the we'll say uh, well 160, and uh, go ahead and uh, what I'll do is you can write your names in my book, and I'll give you a, a bill of sale that you can come back and return. Okay. Sure. But once again, so long as the dogs are safe, I do love these dogs. Please treat them. Especially if you're bringing them back. Treat them like they're family. Because they deserve to be treated like family. Ain't that right, boy? They're Dog lovely boy. dogs. All right. Uh, in the meanwhile, uh, what we can do is you can pay now. Or you can pay half up front today. And, and uh, I guess you're leaving probably bright and early tomorrow. Well, mm -hmm. dim, and, <laughs> dim and early tomorrow. Yeah. If, uh, if they're in a hurry... I can come down here early to meet you in the morning. Uh, I wouldn't mind getting up as early as uh, probably sixth bell. If you really yeah. ask nice, I'll get up at five. Six bell should be fine. Thank you. All right. Six bell means that you'll be able... Well, hell. Because if you run these dogs, it's going to take you about seven hours with their rests to make it out there. Which means that you're going to get there around 1 o'clock. Which means you only got an hour before sundown. You might want to think about leaving earlier. We should probably leave in the night, honestly. Well, yeah. actually, honestly, yeah. get a little bit of sleep and then leave right before, before actually, first light. You know what? That'll work out... Yeah. Yeah, leave a little bit before first light. First light's at 10. 
I don't know where it is where you come from. You're from up north, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> well, you're coming from, from Targus, if you know Garrett. Yeah, so... no, we came from um, Bremen, or I did, at least. All right, but the sun comes up, well, light comes up a little earlier here than it does in Bremen by a few minutes, but not too okay. much. Um, that'll be good, because then you can stop at Kerkonig. And just stay there once you touch base with uh, with Garrett. He's a he's a competent survivalist. Sounds he, good. We'll meet you yeah. back here then. That All right. Sounds well. What time are we meeting up and where? Um, what is the best bar in town? Boy, best the, bar the in best, town the, right now. Yeah. It's probably the North Look. The North Look Inn and Tavern is uh, it's a rowdy place, most commonly frequented by adventurers. So it's the one that you'd know the most. Okay. Um, there, there are others, but that is the biggest one. Yeah, that is definitely the biggest one. It's uh, where the hell is it? It's not on the map. <laughs> uh, it is uh, the the North. Where is it? North oh, look? North Look. Sorry, I thought yeah, this said North right Gate right when front. I was glancing at it. Okay, that makes sense. Well, it's right, it, it is right under the North Gate, at least. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so the North Look would be the, uh, would be the best one. And what time is it now? About uh, right now, five, about, six? I'm going to say that it's it was it's going on about 3 p.m. So actually, if you guys wanted, you could get the dogs now and you could push to get to Karakonig tonight. Honestly, I think that's the better idea. That might be. The sooner we Actually. find him, the better. Uh, how's, how's boy? He's Oops. doing okay. But... Does he need some food and yeah. water, probably? Yeah. Um, Does he feel good for a run still? He's he's had quite a long day. He had a long day. He, he looks pretty done. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me see if he'll rally one sec. Uh, actually, after a short rest, he seems to be doing a bit better. Does he seem to be like doing well enough? Spell? Uh, that would be advantageous? Yeah, probably a light healing spell would probably be helpful. Let, let's take him to the bar. We can give him a beer, and he should be rot uh, as rain. You don't give dogs beer. Yeah, do in the... Do, I mean, you no, give him no, a little you, bit. You, no! Yeah. Do you want to kill the dog? I mean, no, that's that, you're not gonna kill him. You can have, you can give him a little bit of beer. Um, you can give him a little like bit a of little spirit. Bit up. Never give him wine. No. Grapes, grapes, and dogs don't mix. You don't give him that, and no. uh, you keep him away from sweet tree sap. Not maple syrup, but sweet tree sap. Very dangerous. And uh, macadamia nuts also not good. Apparently, I read an article. Good to know. All right. Cool. So, are we going to head up back to the North Luck? Yeah, might as well. Take the dog. You can take your new friend. So, are you heading out tonight? Or, like, right now? Or are you heading out tomorrow? Uh, That's yeah. a good question, because I thought we were heading out tomorrow. Well, Should I think we this head is out... tonight. Honestly, I think if we head well, out tonight, it's probably we don't know better how... and then... We're more likely to find Garrett alive, in my opinion. Yeah, we don't want to race Last like being there too long. To... I know that you want oh. to have fun with your friend. Yeah, but but I, but... I'm, I'm thinking because if we leave now, it'll be about ten o'clock by the time we get there. And then what are we going to do for shelter? There's uh, a town, Kirkonic. It's right there. It's right there. Yeah, we can just. It's about an, about a half hour to an hour, depending on your dogs. Uh, let me. You'll have more daylight if you go tonight. For as much as I like to take you on a date, lady. Uh, if this is a life or death thing. When we uh, get big, well, you can go on a date. Well, seeing right there, then yes, we should probably leave now. I have a spell that I learned recently. Um, so <laughs> if we sleep, spells. if we sleep. Out in the open, it's the spell called Alarm. If we sleep out in the open or anywhere suspicious, I can set up a wire, essentially, 
And if anything comes near that isn't us, I will be alerted. Ooh. Hmm. That sounds helpful. Handy. That, and if any of us find ourselves wandering off in the slow, I, snow, I can message you. So. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, that's true. So I, I still think we should head out tonight. I think we all have rations yeah. prepared. So. Sounds good. Let's, um, let, let's get the dog healed up and then off we scoot. All right. Well, come over here and uh, come and pick uh, pick your dogs. You get three. Kelly, any <laughs> any dogs that speak to you? But that lock. Kelly will just be nice. good. Hello, puppies. Uh, make me an animal handling roll. Are there any dogs that are sort of like silvery? That's oh yes, kind of absolutely. Kind of Twenty four. Twenty four. The dogs are going to react to you very positively. Uh, and you'll be able to see which ones positively uh, you'll be able to <laughs> figure out which ones are the uh, the friendliest and which ones are the peppiest and which ones seem to be probably the most obedient I uh, I will yeah. probably pick out a couple of the more kind of like peppy but obedient and at least so, a good see. leader uh, so sporty international and classic it's the names yeah okay <laughs> well that's uh that's astro that's bailey that's bentley that's bex that's blitzen that's diesel uh i did pick the categories first what are you doing there we go and then uh for the bitches um that's uh give me the list damn it can give me. It's not giving me the list for any of the girl names. Bentley can be a girl's name. Bentley I was gonna can say be Bailey. A... True. So can Bailey. I've actually hey. never met a boy named Bailey. It's always been girls. And that's uh, that's. I'll that's, half. that's Hollow. That's Kai. That's uh, that's uh, Remy, and uh, that's Scout. So you pick which ones you want. Whatever one seems more like forthright and like ready to jump in. All right, that's they Remy. Are silvery, Remy. Sure. Remy is the silvery one. Uh, I will lean down and say hello. I like the name Scout. Well, right. Scout Lock. Uh, Scout is a big bandity-looking dog with black yes. spots over his eyes. Yes, that's what Vista wants. Uh, uh, so a raccoon dog, basically. Yeah. And what's what's Bentley like? Uh, Bentley is the goofy one with one floppy ear, oh, but a baby. great but a great smile. Oh. Well, I like the sounds of that. And thank you very much for the subscription, Co. Yay! <laughs> or no, that's not how you do it. That's M three. And thank you very much for the bark, Ryuji. He's just laying on the ground doing nothing. <laughs> and, and barking. I mean, that sounds like a corgi. That sounds like something I would do. All right, yeah. so he will let you pick out your dogs, and he will show you how to lash them down into uh, into the strap and how to um, hit them with the uh, with the bridle, because uh, we're not using we're, dogs. Don't get whips in in my game. No, um, no, no. As, whether or not they did traditionally, uh, I don't even remember. I don't care. I don't. Care. <gasps> Nobody hurts I dogs. I don't even think that that actual sled dogs do. I think it's mostly with commands. Yeah, it's commands? like. Now, yeah. yeah. With the, the, the reins. Yeah. yeah. It's like leash like training. Motion. Like when you like when you leash train a dog, mm -hmm. it's like depending where you're holding it, it kind of tells them different things. Yeah. That's nice. I like I love dogs. My dog is just like right dogs there. Fed, dogs dogs are right good. beside me. He's being he's being really good tonight. All right. So with that, um he'll uh he'll hook you up with those dogs, he'll take your money, uh, and we'll give you directions on how to get out of here and fast. Um, you come back. We'll have a date then, okay? And don't forget to bring the, uh, here's your here's your bill of receipt. And he'll pass you over a slip of paper. Oh, good fact. Okay. I'm the it. stable master deal. Sounds Take good. Care. We'll see you shortly. Yeah, you will. All right, you be good girls and boys. You treat them nice and you get them safe, okay? All right. Good luck. 
Alrighty. Which one of you weighs the most? Uh, I only weigh approximately 130 pounds. I'm 130. Vistra is, is a chunky girl and she has little weapons. So I think it's team small again. That might be smart. I, be I think that probably Callie balances out only weighs out 35 pounds, so. Yeah. I think Jeez. that probably works the best Callie, then. Callie's probably. a military backpack. <laughs> yeah, you can you can like <laughs> jump on my bank if you're Italian. She really is. Oh, my weapons weigh more than you. She's tall and little. She's short and little. I appreciate. If we're going to launch you, I can just like chuck you. I feel like that would Passer. be rude. Don't you dare. <laughs> how how would a dwarf feel about being tossed? We don't like being tossed. Then You're what tossed. makes you think a halfling make, would like being tossed? I'm saying if she ever wants to, halflings love I can tossed. chuck her. <laughs> That's fair. Toss um, the halfling. Is that if she wants, I would never do it without her life? consent. So, so Lysithian, do you want to drive or do you want me to drive? I can, I can drive. Do I have any experience with dog sleds or sleds or driving in general? I don't think you do. Do you Probably have any not. any vehicle proficiencies or animal well, handling proficiency? Uh, let me check my animal handling. Uh, can uh, I the I, roll 20 just got super loud all of a sudden, by the way, I on, on my end. Oh, sorry. I, I actually haven't heard can't, it at all yet. I can't hear it. I actually have God of War music in my head. Really? Nice. Yes. I'm not uh, playing that, so I don't know. Yeah, no, so, I, I'm playing yeah. it for me. Oh, yeah, okay. I hear good. very faint. I can't hear roll twenty, so I just am not listening to it. That's weird. Yeah, I, okay. for some yeah. reason it wasn't playing for me. Yeah, sorry to interrupt, but it's just all, all of a sudden it's got like pff, super super loud on my end, so all I wasn't right. sure if that was gonna. It's because I was adjusting the volume a little bit. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. but it's fine now. Um, cool. And if it's not working for you in roll twenty, just refresh, and it should work. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll do that. Okay. Oh yeah, there it goes. All right, so, uh, but God of War's fine, because so long as I don't have to pay licensing fees for it, um, which I couldn't afford. <laughs> oh, God. For, especially for the recent one, but I'm like, the recent one, it, it like, it's, especially. That's my, that's it, my gym playlist. Oh, it's so good. Ba I'm replaying it right now. Curl. So I, I'm replaying Once we figure it out. Characters, though. Once we figure out which one of you has the better animal handling. Allie's gonna give you a rundown. I have a plus two to my hand animal handling. What about you? Uh, let me check. Oh, hey, okay, that's the yeah. Here we go. Do 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 do. Uh, plus two. Okay, so about the same. Yeah, about um, the same. I'm rather familiar with uh, creatures of different kinds due to where I come from. So. This is Katarina from her profession. Oh, um, true. So, uh, boulder parchment shears. Yeah, sounds good. Um, yeah. Cheers. Wait, does winning mean driving or does winning mean not driving? Uh, I think winning means driving. Uh, best two out of three. All right, sounds good. Sure. Uh, Boulder parchment cheers. Oh, I think I looks win. like looks like you're driving. I at least I'm for the driving. first bit. Sure. I'll yeah. take first shift. You take second. That sounds great. That works for me. All, All right, right so, Kelly, run down. Right. So as you're giving that, uh, as you're giving the explanation of how to how to pilot a sled, you'll hear the sound of crunching boots behind you. There are crunching boots everywhere, of course, in Bryn Shander, but for some reason this kind of perks your attention up a bit as they stop nearby. And you will hear a deep, slightly gravelly voice. Uh, Kelly Thornhill. Glance over. Uh, all of you will see uh, a man dressed in a blue, uh, a blue tunic, with a broad brown cloak, uh, lined with thick white fur. Um, his skin is uh, very, very dark brown, and he has um, a goatee and. Um, a bit of a chin strap, but no mustache to speak of, that's uh, black but starting to gray through with age, as well as his eyebrows. His head is completely sh shorn, uh, shaved down to the scalp, and human. Looms about six foot two, six foot three. It's kind of hard to tell in the snow. He has a, a blade dangling at his hip, and uh, 
an insignia on his belt that marks him as a uh, sheriff. What brings you here? Marky, how are you? She'll go in for the hug. He'll kneel down and give you a hug. <laughs> Good to see you again. Good to see you. How's it going? Got a little more gray up in there. Well, not all of us age as slowly as halflings. Longer to love us for. <laughs> I would love like Kelly. So. Were you uh, traveling with a uh, with your book club? Book club. I mean, <laughs> well, we we're hanging out up in Bremen, but uh, so we're going by Targos. We uh, mm. saw Garrett off, and then uh, mm. earlier today, boy came running back. So mm -hmm. we're buying dogs and we're heading out. Where's the boy? Right there. Dog named boy. All right. <laughs> Original, isn't it? She, she doesn't even notice. She just keeps going. Well, I don't know Garrett, but. <laughs> well, boy was jumping about mission. Yeti. So we're going to go see if we can give him a hand. You found yourself an adventuring party. Just a little one. I know you, Firestring. I've heard of you, Dankhill. Yes. Vistra? Vistra. Vistra Dankhill. Better than roaming about by myself. That's fair. Very useful. Not I haven't seen you, friend, but well met. Uh, my name is Lysithian, and you are? Um, oh, this is Marky. Markham Southwell. My I'm the Sheriff of Bryn Shander. Fancy. Tabitha said that you were here. I thought I'd come and see if I could find you. Oh, Did, uh, right. We were planning on staying the night originally, but we're going to head out in a few minutes. When you get back, if you're into adventuring, for one, don't worry about staying at, uh, at the North Look. I can find you accommodations. The how uh, A lot of the houses in the city are empty now. Why is that? Oh, no. Lottery. Mm. Right. But if you're doing adventures, Callie, yeah. I might have a job for you when you come back. Oh, well then. We'll have to come by soon. Is it time sensitive? Not incredibly. Okay. You, I heard the words rescue mission. Yeah, and then there was a couple other places near there we, we've had mentions of, so we might stop on our way back. But we gotta bring the dogs back anyway, so. Hmm. Now yeah, this will wait. But I'll be waiting for you. You do that. <laughs> She'll be cutesy about it. Can I insight check these? Things? Yes, you may. <laughs> <laughs> Always have the insight check on Callie's relationships with people. That is a natural one, so I know this, know this absolutely fucking nothing. They're, they're probably related. <laughs> who knows? It, who knows, right? I mean, it could be a reincarnation spell going, going wrong or something like that, right? Like, they were originally a, both halflings. Now now he's like a six-foot-tall black man. You know, like, it just happens. He's a very tall halfling. I would That is know. literally the opposite of, of Frodo Baggins. Yeah. 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 This guy basically looks like um, uh, I forget his I forget how to pronounce his full name, but uh, the guy from Guardians of the Galaxy. Who? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, basically yeah. Basically, basically him, yeah. right? It's just a slightly older version. It's like it's it starts with a D, and I don't remember. It's a DJ something. I don't. It's a. It, yeah. Cool guy. Cool guy. Um, all right, so he will smile and. Give you, uh, give you passage to go. Take care of yourselves. We will. Yeah. Yes. All right. And with that, do you head out into the cold? Let's head yes. out into the cold. Let's go. Okay. Oh, before we go though, uh, Callie will just pull Markham aside a bit and be like, "Can you let Tabitha know I won't be able to go drinking with her tonight?" I think she'll survive. Thanks. You're the best. 
I know. <laughs> stay safe out there. You stay safe in here. It's a crazy place. Well, it's been pretty quiet since the giant showed up a few years ago. Right. I'd heard about that one. I wasn't here for that one. Hmm. I'll tell you a story sometime. Yeah. Sounds great. Hold you to it. All right. They'll wave and let you guys head off on your way. Uh, with that, are you picking up any other supplies or are you just going to go? You probably have enough on you to make it there. It's uh, Actually, you definitely have enough to make it. To care, Koenig. Honestly, Callie's not too worried about food. She can handle that if need be. Okay. So, heading out into the wilderness, you burst through the front gates, or pardon me, you burst through the east gate of Bryn Shander and begin surging onward, pulled by your sled dogs. It actually takes very little to drive them in normal conditions, you just keep an eye on them. At about an hour, you can see the pace begins to slug it a bit. So you pull over. Give them a drink. Give them a bite to eat. Let them rest for about five, ten minutes. And before long, they're hopping around and ready to go again. And this continues for about three hours. Can I get a group survival check? Coming up. Oh no. Okay, uh, not too bad. What's my survival? It's 14 from 14? me. Okay. 14? Okay. Oh wait, no, sorry, it's six. Six. Oh, that makes all the difference. Alright, <laughs> so um from now, who is piloting is it Vistra or is it Callie that's piloting the other one? I'm the pilot it generally stands at the very back, right? And then the other space is like sitting yeah. space. It's basically sitting in cargo space. I'm kind of thinking it should probably be Vistra just to like balance the whole thing properly. Yeah, so you don't yeah. want to shove the, the front down and the back up. You kind of want it in the reverse. So yeah, I just figure you'd be piloting the dog since you have the more kind of animal handling. I think theme. I'm probably sitting right in front of you going, okay, do this, do that, okay. do that. So the, the way distribution is pretty good. I'm basically so, telling her what to do. <laughs> that's fair. Uh, all right, so you head out into the into the uh, the early falling night. About three hours in, you find yourselves. Uh, one moment, let's just see if it happens. It does not. Um, in the distance, you will be able to see that there is. Well, I mean, it's quite dim out, but based on so i keep going to give you guys descriptions and i'm like wait there's no anything there's no sun there's no it's only night and, um judging by the way the winds are blowing though you're you probably picked a good time to go you think a blizzard's probably about to touch down behind you mm. good timing very uh, um and as you are making your way over sorry i, I want to swap a different track in here Making our way downtown. Uh, Moving fast. fast. Yeah. That's true. And with all the breaks and stuff, Callie makes really good friends with all the dogs. I'll say Vistra yeah. like like scout and is like, yes, scout, yes. On all, so. on all breaks, uh, my Scythian is like petting, petting their friend. I don't know if I want to give this dog back. I quite like them. Yeah, I know. I'm bonding. I know. Maybe oh, I'll think about that later. Can I get everyone's passive perception real quick? Yes. 15. Is 12. Uh, 14. 11. Okay. All right. Uh, as you are in your fourth hour of running, you're pushing across the ten towns pushing across Icewind Dale along the Caravan Trail. And we're turning down the music just a little. There we go. Uh, as you are pushing along... Sorry, I'm trying to find the damn map. Mm, fair uh, enough. On the map, on the map. 
you find yourself moving through a valley, a deep and wide one, set between Kelvin's Cairn and Bremen's Run. To your north, you're pretty sure that you can see the the distant um, the distant smoke uh, and light rising out of Termalane. One of the other towns. And beyond that is Lonely Wood. As you push through here, um, Cali and Lysithian, you are going to start to notice there are tracks around here. Dwarf. Tracks? Looks like dwarf, actually. Oh. You know this area to be known as Dwarven Valley, and uh, Dwarven miners live under this area. Oh, that's fair. They're fairly, um, uh, fairly, what's the word, antisocial, uh, with outsiders. But, I mean, they're not hostile. Kill y'all back. Hey, hey, Bistra, watch out. We're entering Dwarven Valley. Ah! Don't oh, hit any of your people. Yeah, 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 let's not do that. We don't, we don't like being run over. Too much. Yeah, it's mostly Too much. Belief. Not Too a very much. big road bump, though. Oi! Careful. True, but careful. Oh, I am being careful. Just making oh. sure that I don't hit any tiny road bumps. All right. And uh, as you come over a rise, about 15 minutes later, you, you all will crest it. Your dogs will suddenly become much perkier, much more alert as they look down. And can I get perception roll off of everybody to see if you can notice what they're looking at? Um, Katarina, you're going to roll with disadvantage because you're human. Uh, unnatural 20. Perfect. 19. Uh you said perception, correct? Perception, yeah, because it's it's the middle of the night, so mm. well, it's the middle of the evening, but it's uh, pitch black out. Eight, nineteen. Even with disadvantage, my non disadvantage was twenty four. Holy crap! Uh, so you are going to be able to, in the dimness, make this out, Vistra. You're too busy trying to make sure the dogs don't throw you from the sled, uh, which is yeah. a, a genuine, genuine fear. That yeah, uh, that's fair. As you push forward, you all... And Callie, you had a... 19. 19, all right. So everybody, uh, except for Vistra, are going to notice that down... Down at the bottom of this hill is a full dozen reindeer. Two of them, the largest males, have antlers that glow a soft blue in the night Ooh. oh well, that's as you crest the rise you they're probably about a hundred feet ahead of you down this hill what do you do um, Mr. hold on to the dogs what why uh reindeer i want to roll nature okay uh, yeah. as as Callie points it out, you can now see them, Vistra. Uh, you're rolling nature, and uh, what are you you uh, doing, Mike? Um, so I was thinking, why why are their antlers glowing blue? You can roll me nature. Let's do it. Both of you can roll me nature. Let's do it. Any two. Twenty. Okay. Um, Unnatural twenty. Let me see if it tells me in the damn book. <laughs> that would be helpful, wouldn't it? It would be really helpful. Like I was flipping through this, and it's like they glow blue, and I'm like, that's a cool detail. But why? But why? But why do they glow blue? But why do they glow blue? Magic. It's, it's, it's because they have friendship. friendship the power of friendship. Is magic. Friendship is magic. Friendship so we is all magic. Are glowing. Magic is not friendship, though. Magic is not friend. It can it be. It can force fake friendship. Which you then find out once you break out of it. I One out of every gold. six has glow-in-the-dark antlers that emit yes. dim light in a ten-foot radius. Just for it, no reason? It It is just a thing with Icewind Dale reindeer. I am deciding <laughs> cool. that right now this is my official stance as, as a DM. Because um, it doesn't say in the book. Uh, but that's a cool detail. I like it. Uh, so both of you There's will know that there... There's some weird arcane weeds here about that they eat sometimes. And basically it just states that they are special blessed reindeer. That the... 
they're they're specially blessed they are seen as sacred beasts for some of the the local tribes that wander the land oh, that's nice uh, yeah as you were looking at them can i get everyone to make me a perception roll Let's this is... it's going to be an eight total. Okay. 21. Damn! This dice is banished tonight. 18. 18. Okay. So, uh, let's go ahead and put on this. As you're looking around. Vistra, what did you get this time? I missed you. Eight. It was the same. It I, was the I same. Banished so, the dice. So you and Lysynthian are going to be looking at these actually fairly indifferent grazing herds. They're stomping through some of the snow and plucking out what little bit of vegetation still exists in this area, but for the most part, they're just meandering. The other two of you, though, are going to notice... that... <clears throat> that uh, on the other side of this hill a group is approaching you can smell them more than anything Katarina and Callie you can see them in the dimness there are five figures human dressed in ragged skins cloaks carrying long spears and crude bows wrapped with fur to allow for a better grip. Hunters? Looks like, uh, like, what are they, how is it pronounced? Regid. The Regid tribes people. And, uh, what did you two get on your perception rolls? I got eight. Eight? Uh, okay. us two? Yes. Oh, 18. um, 18? 21. 21? It looks like they're just hunting the reindeer. They um, probably wouldn't appreciate the spooking, but the, you don't think they would care one bit about you were you just to give them a little bit of space. Uh, and as they approach, you will also be able to see that each of them has some sort of regalia about them. In fact, their bows look like they're made of of elk antler. Ooh. Their outfits are particularly particularly um, not bovine, what the hell is the word I'm thinking of? Eye elk catching? Eye? Eh, I was mostly just thinking like um, basically like game at the game animal they seem to hunt is mm -hmm. reindeer and elk. Um, and you have heard that one of the uh, the Regid tribes the Regid tribes is uh, known as the tribe of the elk. They're generally fairly peaceful, definitely better than the tiger or wolf tribes. You don't want to meet up with them. I will suggest to Lysithian that we give them uh, that we give some give them some space. Now call back to Vistra. Of, oh hey, go go around. Let's try not to spook them. It looks like there's a hunting party. Let them do their thing. Okay. So if you choose to do that. Uh, can I get both drivers to make me a... We'll do a handle cart roll. So this is going to be a, a wisdom plus... None of you are proficient, so a wisdom roll. But plus one, because the dogs will do what you say. Okay. Uh, my wisdom is very good, so let me just look at my character sheet here. I have too many pages. 19? Pack. What'd you get? 19. 19. All right. Uh, so, with a quick tug of your reins, your dogs are going to listen to you instinctively and move over, doing a, wa a, a wide circle down the hill to the right. Lysithian, what did you get? I got 14. 14? Uh, your dogs are going to respond well, too. Uh, they are going to pull um, very gently and, and follow the other dogs as well. And as soon as you reach the bottom of the hill, the tribes people break into motion. You can hear the sound of arrows flying through the air. And this, as you see one of the majestic beasts with glowing antlers slam into the ground, uh, an arrow puncturing its throat. 
Some of the others rear up and begin to stampede away, but... Oh, the tribe's people leap into gear, and um, by the time it's over, three of the beasts have fell. Not a bad day for five hunters. Yeah, that's a pretty good ratio. One of them, a smaller shape, a girl or woman, maybe a teenage, stands pulling her spear out of the side of one of the elk and or probably one of the reindeer and watches you. Oh, give a give a high wave in the dark. She'll nod at you so long as you're not getting closer. And we'll go back to uh she'll keep an eye on you as she begins like working on her kill. Uh Lysithian, were you doing something? No. Oh. Just right. watching them very closely. Okay. Uh, it doesn't appear like they actually give two craps about you. So long as you don't try to steal their kill or approach them. Which is how I like to deal with people with weapons. <laughs> what? That's fair. Okay. At least to this level. Yeah. <laughs> now, before long, you're going to... Well, actually, after a bit more of a trek, you are all going to find yourself... Rounding the side of Care Dineval. Care Dineval is the first settlement that you'll pass from Bryn Chander. It's taken quite a while for you to get here at this point. In fact, uh, it's taken almost five hours, five and a half, to reach here. From here, you know that Care Conage is about another hour by sled. You're making good time. Do you stop in Care Dineval to rest, or do you press on? Um, hmm. I'll say may as, press on. May as well press on. Okay. May as well press on. I'm going to keep an eye out just to see if we pass any other sled tracks. Not sure how much I'll see in the dark, but... Sure, you can make me a perception roll if you're looking specifically. As can anybody else who is looking around. Yeah. I will assist in that. Okay. 20. I'm not 20. Distracted. I don't notice anything. Uh, it's going to be a 10. Not Ten. Good. Okay. Uh, Twelve uh, for me. Nice. So as you are looking around, basically what you have to do is, as you approach Care Dineval, uh, you will slide in through the east gate, and will ride down the city streets until you head up the north route up to Care Conic. And as you're looking around on the way in, you'll notice that there are sled tracks that come through here. In fact, the closer you get to town, the thicker that they have been. It's A blizzard hasn't set down here in a good day. And anything that would have hidden Garrett and his friends' travels hasn't been present. There are definite dog tracks and sled tracks. Alright, so they probably passed this way already before they got hit by whatever it is. As, all right. As you slide down the streets of Caradineval, each of you are going to catch the scent of firewood, fire smoke, mm. fresh cooked mm. meats. Mm. The tavern looks so inviting, <laughs> or at least it smells so inviting. And as your sleds continue to pull you north, and then onto the northern road gnawing on a frozen piece of jerky. Right. <laughs> Glancing over your shoulder, uh, all of you who got at least uh, a 10. So I think that was everybody, right? Okay. You will all see that Care Dineval, the actual care, the castle, sits on a hill just behind you. Is this the castle? The Cora was talking about? Perhaps. Something to consider on the way home, maybe. Or not. Do you continue northward? Yep. Yeah. The dogs rally for that last hour. Before long, you are going to find yourselves um, in the bleak blackness approaching the wallless town 
of Kerkonik. Now, Kerkonik is a small town, more of a hamlet than anything. Its population is about 150 people, and its symbol hangs on its front gate a shield with a blue field and a white fish. It has a white border on all sides except for its bottom, which uh, symbolized the lake and the surrounding area. And as you approach, you can see, even in the darkness, the light from the town reflects backward, and you can just barely make out the silhouette of the white snow-covered slopes of Kelvin's Cairn. Now, the town itself consists of a terraced row of houses that recede from the shore of Lac Dinger, a Dinesher, uh, like the tiers of an amphitheater. The harbor, like all other harbors in Icewind Dale, are frozen. And, but here, the docks are skewed and broken up by the shifting ice. You can actually see where the boards have splintered as you move through town. Hmm. The moving ice has done a wonder of damage on this town's economy. Buried under the snow uh, to the south, uh, the last row of houses are, uh, pardon me, to the, to the north, uh, you see a number of houses that were probably some of the original settlements. They're completely buried, abandoned. And as you head into town, there's a sense in the air here. The people don't burn them. They don't strip them for firewood. They don't move into them. It's a town with dead buildings. A grim reminder that nothing lasts forever. Something that the people who live here are comfortable addressing every day of their lives. With that, do you look around for uh, for a place to stay for the night? Yeah. Yeah. with a warm room has, and stable has anyone been here before uh if you have not you can if you don't if you didn't immediately react i'm gonna say you probably haven't made it out this far before probably maybe not. i said no. two out two years out here why don't you go ahead and make me a um make me roll me a d20 we'll see if you don't if you think you might have been here before roll me a d20 we'll see if you have nine Nine? Uh, 14 18 18 so you were here briefly and lysithian you may have been here what do you think um i think i've probably passed through but never like stayed here for a very long time that's fair um so and then it is it's been on your list katarina but there yeah. are, there's yeah. no money to be had here yeah like i've made it to caradinaval but never yeah, Kirdinabal's a the, uh, Dinnival's a bit of fun. Like it's got what twice as many people? No, it's got even less people. But it, uh, you know, at least it actually has a castle. That's kind of cool. Yeah, whereas Ker Kernig only has a ruined castle. It's true. Nobody wants that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and uh, so, but you all have probably heard that there are two places in town uh, where you can uh, comfort yourselves. Uh, now, they did say. Um, Garrett's husband said that your best bet was to go by Frozen Far Expeditions, which is an adventuring outfitter. At this point, it's about about going on nine o'clock at night. It's pitch black outside, and um, there's a chance that some people might still be there, uh, or you can look for at them, or you can look for them at one of two locations: the Northern Light, which is an inn. Um, which uh, those of you who've been here before know that it's named from a magic lantern that hangs above its front door, casting a beautiful, comforting light on the surrounding area. Or the Hook, Line, and Sinker, the local tavern, which is uh, very, very popular because the owner, Glenn, leaves half pints of beer out on a table. As soon as you enter the room, you get a free half pint. You get one. Yes, let's go there. <laughs> Uh, so that's the hook. Uh, the line is uh, that you're. It's up to you to order the second and thirds. And the sinker is also uh, a, a famous local drinking contest they tend to have at the end of the night. Uh, so the first half beer is free. They expect you to make up for it after that. 
So in first or the ex expedition first? Where are you headed? I think um, let's let's head to the inn first, get a room. And then we then... And then Well did we wanna try and see if the stall is open? Well we might before as well close because the they might close and check and see if there's yeah. somebody there before they go to an inn. And then yeah. go to the inn. Just a quick swing by. I mean in town this big, how long can it take anyways? It's far beyond the way. Uh it actually is on the way. Like, uh, you will round the northern corner, and uh, we'll be headed down, uh, and you'll see Frozen Far Expeditions, just the most northernly point in town. Do you stop? Yeah. Yeah, quick yeah. stop. All right. Uh, you can see that there are some lights on inside of the frosted windows. Uh, the door does have its closed sign up. I'm going to knock. Knock, knock, knock. <laughs> mm, let's see who answers the door. That doesn't help me. I need a definitive answer. That's better. <laughs> I love what you're like. You're like, it's one of two people. You roll a 10. You're like, is that really an answer? Is that really an no. answer? No. I need is a that 17. Both or none? That's they're kind of just like, just hide. Let the message get it. Oh, get the machine yes. get it. All right. Uh, a few moments pass and you'll hear uh, just a minute. Thank you. It's a thick voice. Mm, female. Mm, slightly accented the door will open a moment later and uh a uh a young but um a fairly fairly sturdy and and uh and burly um female dwarf will answer the door she looks at you over or she looks you all over and hey how can i help you um, do you know Garrett, survivalist sled dogs, the whole lot? He recommended your place, so I figured you might know him. It sounds like he shops with you. Uh, yeah, he was here about uh, about a day and a half ago. Okay, he did make it through here then. Do you know where he was going? He was going up to Kelvin's, up the, the mountain. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, something happened. One of his dogs came back. We're here to make sure he's okay. So we're going to check mm. on him. Because right, the dog right. was yelping about yetis. Are yetis normal in this area? Or is this something new that we have to worry about? Uh, I'd worry about it if I were you. Good to know. So right. it, does, it does happen. Especially the, owl, like the bull males. Stay mm. away from them. Do you know what he might have been looking for up at Kelvin's? Did he have a planned route? When he was in here before, they were mentioning something about mm, some treasure or something up there. Okay. Uh, there are always rumors of treasures hidden around here. Something probably left over from when, uh, well, when the care was still up here. You can see that the snow on the hill. Yeah, that used to be our castle before it got raised. Oh. Be before even my time. So, if you're uh, if you're headed up there, if that's his dog, he can probably take you to the the sled. He had a full full okay. fleet of dogs. Cool. No, just Do wanted to check if he'd passed through, and he mentioned you guys when we met him last. So. No, he's uh. I hope he's okay. Good luck. Yeah, thank you. Do you rec which which inn do you recommend? No, we've only got the one, a Northern Light. I mean, the other one's a tavern. You can probably sleep on the floor at the end of it, ah. but that's about it. Ah, okay, I get you. Thanks. Uh, if you're going to the it's Northern Light, uh, Corey is in a particularly sensitive mood these days. She's the older sister that runs it. Give her a berth. If you can. Do you know why she might be in a more foul mood? She's always like that. It comes with the season. It's just That's getting worse. It's getting worse every year that this place stays this cold. Okay, so just to, just avoid pissing her off. Basically, yeah. Good to know. I sit the end. I haven't even done anything yet. Why are you looking at me? Because you yep, have a being gift. being the keyword. <laughs> You, you folks need anything else? No. Yeah, is there anything uh, 
I'll say, would you suggest anything for a rescue mission? You got food? Yes. You yeah. Got, you got climbing gear? Yeah, some. I, I have spell components, but I don't have any climbing gear. What do you have? It's probably better than the last place they stopped. Where's the last place you stopped? Uh, I honestly don't remember the name. Black Iron. Yep, no, we're it's better. Black Iron. They were. They were. Trash. We're better. Yeah, no, that sounds Not about surprised. Right. Most A long players. map. Atnus. Yep. We better than Black Iron. <laughs> You'll hear laughter coming from inside the building. That's all I wanted to hear. Yeah. Um. Well, we're closed, but we can stay open a few more minutes. We're just doing inventory before we head to the pub. Uh, you're looking for... What kind of stuff are you looking for? Um, Out of character. Rope, picks. Rope, definitely picks. Um, any sort of survival gear that you might recommend? Okay. I don't think... Do I have a bedroll? Hang on. What I'm do gonna, we need? I'm going to start searching through my yeah. Do I have a bedroll? All right, so... Uh, no, I don't actually have a bedroll. <laughs> All right, so uh, bedroll. So bedroll is going to cost you a gold. Okay, that's fine. Uh, a 50 feet of rope. Uh, hemp is going to cost you one gold. Silk rope is going to cost you 10. It's half as half as much, like weight-wise. Um, if you need a shovel, that's two gold, and so is a pick. So shovel and pick are both two gold. Uh, um. And then you guys already have... Um, uh, what are they called? Clip clampons? Yeah. Yeah. Pittons, yeah. yeah. No, not pittons. The things on your on Oh, your yeah, 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 yeah. Crampons. Yes. Crampons, that's what they're. Yeah. Uh, so crampons. you already have those. Uh, besides that, uh, other good stuff. Uh, those, are, those are the main ones I would say you'd probably need. I will okay. take so, a... How much for the, the hemp rope? Just one. Oh, just one gold? Just one gold for the hemp. Yeah, it's uh, more expensive for the silk because it's it's damn hard to get silk up here. That's very true. You said that was how much? Just so I can write it down for my... One, one gold. For silk? No, it's five. Oh, five gold for silk. Five, five, five. Uh, for the okay. hemp, it's it's one. Okay, uh, I will get uh, two uh, hemp rope. Sure, that's 50 feet. Is that enough? Oh, yeah, well, it's, it's 100 for the two, but... Oh, yes. No, Sure. perfect. Just, right. just in case. So she'll she'll gather those up for you. Um, I got to be and honest, the shovel might be good. I don't know if you're going to need a pick so much unless you're doing some vertical climbing. I don't, I don't think you'll probably have to. I, I'm uh, I'm I'm going to pick up uh, you know while we're here, I'll pick up the I'll pick up a pick at the shovel, two lengths of rope, and a bedroll. Actually, tell you what, one sec. Um, they don't have this in the book, but what I'm going to do is say that you can get a climbing pick, like a climbing axe. Uh, that so they're using like a miner's pick. I'll say that a climbing axe is the same price. You're not going to be able to use it quite as effectively, but it'll help you with climbing and handholds and things. Mm, okay. okay. So it'll still be two gold because, and then you get to feel like Laura Croft. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll pick up. Uh, uh, should you get one or two pick of of the pick so you can Oi. pick things up. You just need one. The, okay. Yeah. So. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, so yeah, you guys can buy whatever you want there. I will get a climbing axe. Okay, she'll get you a climbing axe. That's two gold. Is somebody um, getting a shovel? A shovel? I, I'm getting a shovel, a climbing I don't really axe, carry one, so. and two lengths of rope and a bedroll for me. So. Okay, so you guys can all. I already had my explorers pack with yeah. all the. That I'm going stuff to. In it, so. I don't yeah. have an explorers pack, so I'm going to actually get a bedroll as well. So I'll take one more gold off. Sounds and good. Get the bedroll. All right, she'll she'll happily give those to you. Uh, do you need rations or torches? Uh. I've got some. Actually... I've got torches. Okay, sounds yeah. good. Do you need oil? Probably. Mmm, that's probably a good idea. Yes. So yeah, you can absolutely do that. We'll uh, let's see some oil. A flask of oil is a silver piece per pound of oil. Okay. Uh, yeah. I so, I have plenty of silver, so. That's all... I'm gonna get a lantern. You already is have a lantern. I do. You have the lantern of elemental location that works as a normal lantern as well. Mm. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't have that one. Uh, one of you do. One of you does. 
Yeah, I think Isisian has it. I think uh, I think Isisian had it. Have the uh, the lantern? Yeah. Oh yes, yes, I have that. Otherwise, I don't a, have it in my inventory, but I do have it in my. Uh, a lan a bullseye lantern is ten gold, and a hooded lantern is five gold. Yes, I was thinking hooded. Okay, you can get a hooded lantern if you don't want to use that one then. I was just thinking that it's probably safer than a torch. Good to have backup. Mm -hmm. Like it, on a windy mountainside, a torch is probably going to go out, whereas a lantern probably won't. Yeah. That's true. You guys are smart. I spent all my gold on the dog, so I'm poor right now. But I will get a flask of oil and a shovel. Uh, anything else? Oh, I think that's it. Thank you. Hey, uh, no problem. Thanks for your patronage and good luck up there. Oh. If you find any treasure, bring it by to show us. Oh, maybe. Have a good one. Good dunk. Oof. She was kind of cute, that dwarf. Yeah. All right. So I guess we have to go find rooms in the Northern Light and hopefully not piss the landlady off. Yeah. Done anything yet? Why are you looking at me? All right. Listen, and... just because you had sex with the other guy doesn't mean what? Hmm? Hey, nothing. I had nothing to do with with. Oh no, I wasn't talking about off. you. I was talking about Kelly. Oh, okay. I don't know why you persist in believing that one. I don't, I don't exactly know why you about those sort of things. I don't know why you insist on denying it. Cause I didn't. I, mean, I can let's... start giving you a list of all the people I've slept with, but that one's not on it. Let, let's put a pin this... in this. We go to the, the, the inn, then we go to the bar and drink, and then we can talk about this once we're all nice and peace. All right. I'm going to lean down to my dog and just whisper, she totally slept with him, and keep walking. Uh, I'm skipping Allie's down the street the the She'd be like, why is she doing this? I, it's not the she. It is a they They've got you there. Right. Mm. That's true. I don't uh, they're still stupid, though. <laughs> no. Nah. He All was right. stupid, and he got what he deserved. Katarina? Hey. All right. So, um, it's a pretty easy jaunt. You'll make your way to the Northern Light, and you'll see that uh, those of you who've been here before uh, have actually probably stayed in this inn before. And as you round the corner, you're expecting to see that beautiful glowing light, and yet there's nothing. There's light coming through the windows, of course, but the magic lantern that hung from that post above the door is now gone. For a moment, you start to think this place might be closed. A quick knock on the door, and it opens freely. It's not locked. And you'll see that the um, the inn is presently kept by the uh, the Sherard sisters. Um, Allie and Corey. Allie is youthful, charming, and lithe. She greets you as you come in. She's in her mid-twenties with auburn hair and freckles dotting her cheeks and uh, has that kind of mischievous lower lip that always seems to find a place among, uh, against her teeth. And uh, through the back, you can hear the sound of stout, scowling Cory muttering about something as she's cooking and provisioning. They check you in, or at least, uh, don't fall off the couch, dog. Sorry, the dog almost rolled off the couch. Um, what do you mean? Uh, Allie checks you in without a problem. Um, but the whole while, they're shooting glances at each other. It's obvious they're sisters from the moment they open their mouths at each other. Ask if they want food. Yeah, I'll ask if they want food. Obviously, they're guests. I love food. Two rooms. And food is going to be uh, one mm, one gold. Um, you need to put your dogs up. We've got a we've got a warm room down here. Uh, for the lot of you, uh, it'll be uh, two point five gold. I'll take a separate room on my own, please. 
Okay, we can do that. Uh, why don't we say that's, uh, well, three rooms and the dogs, three gold. And uh, any, any, we don't have much to drink, but uh, if you okay. need anything. All right, three gold sounds fair. Yep. All right, and that's just for the one night? That's yeah, just now. one night. Well, that works for me. Uh, and she leads you up to your room, and with that, you prepare to go and get drunk at the mm -hmm. bar. Uh, but before we do that, as you head into your rooms, drop your things off and Allie's prepare to go share get with blood. this time. Yeah. You're, more bed gonna, space. More bed space. Nice. <laughs> As you curl up in your beds or you unpack your things and the customary drawers they have in the rooms, these are, you find that this is much nicer than the Luskin Arms. It's, it's a fine inn and is actually quite charming. More of a bed and breakfast than anything here. And is very clean. In fact, you wonder for a brief moment if it might be a little hard to fall asleep without the sound of the rhythmic skittering of rats in the walls. But we'll find that out in a few minutes. We're going to take a break. We will be right back. Hello and welcome back to Rime of the Frostmaiden, Episode 3, here on Dork Tales. Now, you went and uh, headed to the tavern, had a few drinks, and eventually had a nice rest at the inn. You woke bright and early, refreshed, with um, a thick porridge all ready in the cauldron downstairs, ready to be served up with uh, dollops of sweet cream and a nice, not too alcoholic, but just sturdy enough beer to get you through the day, wake you up just a tiny bit, and give you a little bit of fire in your belly. And with that... Those things are just too strong? Too strong alcohol? What? First thing in the morning, like you want, you want, you want it to be a little flat. I think. I, I don't. Nah. Know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, all right. Just one moment. Yeah, you're already there. Okay, cool. With that, it's a quick jaunt to the base of Kelvin's Cairn. Your dogs will happily drag you along. Boy, pulling the hardest. In fact, you had trouble even sleeping in past sixth hour with this dog hopping on the bed and whining at you. There's desperation in his motions. Aww. Now, the base of Kelvin's Cairn is huge. The mountain looms ahead of you. A frozen giant. A monolith. You could spend hours and hours checking for the base camp. But with Boy's keen nose, he pulls you over, and before long you see two tents pitched in the snow near an icy outcropping that acts as a natural windbreaker. Between the tents is an overturned sled, and still harnessed to the sled are five howling dogs. Yes. Um, do you approach? Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, but All I'm right. going to keep a keep an eye out just in case. I'm gonna go look at the tents, see what's inside the tents, see if there's any so. sort of clues. All right. So, Lysithian, give me a perception roll. Vister, give me an investigation roll. Uh, it's going to be fourteen. Fourteen? Am I how woke you up? Did it, dog? Hello, dog. Oh, buddy. What a big boy. Fifteen. Oh. Do you need me to let you out? You give me that luck. Hold on. Okay. You might have to go pop. <clears throat> might have to go let the puppy out. Oh. Can you guys hear that? Yeah. yeah. Okay, guys, give me one sec, and I'll tell you yeah. what you saw. One moment. Uh, Sorry. We will yeah. entertain the chat. If you guys have any questions, let us know. Yeah. yeah. East uh, Squee. Something I was thinking might be fun for the future for long-running games like this is to have like options for people to... Um, bark like dogs no uh to have the option for people to uh like submit questions for characters that might be in the yeah room. that'd be cool yeah oh that'd be fun yeah it's like have, and like, have a like a little like people 
moment where we answer like one or two at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. No, it's like. That'd be cool. Let the like chat find my backstory. <laughs> yeah. You can spill the Hello. beans about like certain interactions, stuff like that. Yeah. That might yeah. Be fun. What's that? Um, I was thinking it might be in the future. Ryuji Hohenheim? You want to go see your dad? These dogs, man. It's true. Alejandro's in the bedroom and he's just cute. <sighs> now I have to go take care of my dog one second. Okay. But what I was going to say is it might be fun to have um, like chat be able to like submit some questions for like characters or players about like the game and stuff like that, especially for long oh, running fair. games. So we could do it like an after dark kind of thing or like a that's couple fair. days after. But I'm gonna let Ryuji into the bedroom. Sorry, one second. That's fair. What did I miss? The chat's talking about something. About the question thing. D Kinney's going like, okay, who actually did? Oh, the whole thing okay. between Callie and Lysithian? Yeah. Like. You'll have to go back and watch the previous episode. It was Katarina. Um, <laughs> although, go back and give us the view on YouTube because it's nice. It's but true. Like, uh, oh, okay. All right. <clears throat> I have returned. All right. Lysithian, looking around, you are going to see that there's a trail leading up the side of the mountain. You can see it clear as day. Well as clear as day ever gets around here. By the time you get there, it's um, it's still a bit dark. You've got another hour before the sun is going to be coming up, which is, well, before the dim is going to be coming up, uh, which is perfectly timed for this. You'll see that uh, the dogs appear to be in good shape, and there are no creatures lingering nearby that... except for some birds overhead. That... are dangerous. That's good. I'm going to keep that roll in mind that you made. Vistra, as you approach, you are going to see that um, under the sled are two small crates. Uh, one is empty, and it appears that the dogs broke into it and ate the provisions. The other is uh, too high. It's out of the dog's reach. Do you open it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, prying it open, you'll see there's enough rations to feed four people for uh, probably about three days. Maybe four if they really stretch it. Um, if you're looking around the rest of it, it's... Um, the tents appear to be completely empty. Like nothing it's... like scratches or anything like sign of like a struggle? Nope, there's no sign of any of that at all. If they got into trouble, it was further along this, okay. this climb. Oh, I remember this track. This is the one with the wind that makes it sound like we're having static. I'm going to shut that off and switch a different one in because that... Not to break character too much, guess who spent two hours trying to edit that out of the first episode only to realize oh, it was a backing no. track? Oh, no. Oh. It was not my finest hour as an audio editor. Um, okay. So instead, we're going to use this, which is a bit better. Right. Looking around, you can see that there's only one way to go. Straight up. Boy. Once he's unla unleashed, um, uh, you can see the dogs are very excited to see him and to see all of you. Is anyone taking time to make sure these dogs get fed? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, the dogs are fed, and you think that even in the cold here, with that sled overturned and these tents nearby, once they're unlatched, or unlashed, you think that they'll probably be able to handle themselves. At least for a day while you're up there. Yeah. Especially in this natural windbreak. They're, they're built for it. It's what they love. It's what they do. Do you head up the side of Kelvin's Cairn? Try and find their trail and follow them up. Okay. Where they Lysith went. So Lysithian can direct you to the first part of it, but a little bit beyond their, their uh. vision, about 50 feet ahead, you'll see that the wind outside of this outcropping has completely obliterated any trace. Hmm. If only you had something that knew the way or could detect it somehow. Uh, 
for the <clears throat> for the trail. Uh, for the trail, if only someone knew how to track it, perhaps by scent, perhaps by boy. Allie will go up and look at it and kind of go, hmm. Oi! <laughs> All right. Uh, so if you're letting Boy lead, he will take you up the trail. Mm -hmm. I love that there, there's a chance of this module. You might not have Boy with you here for some reason. Uh, but I don't see why you wouldn't. Um, he is going to immediately rush past you, having taken a brief break at the bottom of the hill to marshal his strength. And he begins taking you up the side of Kelvin's Cairn. Now, before you go, I'm assuming you're bringing your provisions with you. You're leaving some things, probably, you know, extra things like your bedrolls, maybe, in your sled. Uh, are you putting on your snowshoes? Yes. Okay. And probably. your... I'll say my clampons. Clampons? Because you, yeah. you can only put on one of the two, can't you? Yeah, yeah I'm just going yeah. to put on my clampons. The clampons mm. are probably the smarter move, then. Yeah, yeah. Go and slide I'm down kind of looking at it and going, thinking, how far do we think this will take us? It's like, how long? You have no idea. Hmm. Crampons right, I'll strap them on for now, then. Yeah, you can bring snowshoes get... with you. They only wear only weigh about, I think, 10 pounds. Yeah. Maybe 5 bad. pounds. Actually, for Callie, that's a third of her weight. <laughs> but I'll you carry can your the... shoes, Callie. I'm... No, I mean, no, wouldn't, like wouldn't, wouldn't halfling snowshoes also be smaller? Smaller, like wouldn't they basically be like kids' snowshoes? Yeah. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, all right. You begin to climb the mountain. The howling wind, snow, and slippery ice make the climb treacherous, but you've provisioned for it. Every step forward, you feel the bite of your feet as. As your uh, as the metal hooks at the bottom of your feet dig into the snow and ice as you proceed northward, well upward, ahead. On the edge of this treacherous hill, this treacherous ridge that you find yourself on, you'll see four mountain goats perched on a large rock formation, around which you much must navigate. What do you do? What perched on? The mountain uh, goats perched on the ledge that we need to goats, get past. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, there's no map for this or else it'd be easier to explain, but like mm -hmm. directly in front of you, you're walking along a tight ridge along the side of this mountain and perched on a large rock that you'll have to climb over are four mountain goats that are eyeing you indifferently. <laughs> uh, yep, Eww. same shit as always. I'm... <sighs> Uh, you can make me a Vistra. If you're doing that, make me either animal handling or intimidation. Your call. Uh, I'll do... Let's go with intimidation. Okay. Intimidating it's... a mountain goat. I'm going to try. It's a, a 12. A 12? I'm going to intimidate it. All right. One moment. Well, it, I'm going to see what it... Um, oh, no. Actually, oh, no. actually, the goats are going to look at you and realize that you're not worth the trouble. And are going to scatter, clearing the path for you. Oh, goats. All right. Sweet. Well, almost as if they got a nat one. Uh, <laughs> Excellent. Do you continue forward? Yes. Yeah. Up and yeah. over. Callie's going to keep an eye out for weak spots in the trail and maybe go first. Okay. Because she's okay. going to go lighter what, than What the is others? your marching order right now? So it's, so it's Callie. I'll go after Callie. And I figure like other people can shoot over her if need be. Yeah. Yeah. It's not gonna be no, too yeah. difficult. Sure. Then uh, I'll go after um Katarina. Okay, and that means Vistra's taking up the rear. Okay. Follow us to hit if anything's in front of us, but I can get the guys from behind. Can um, Can Callie, if you're up in front and you're looking around, you can give me a perception roll. Okay. I am using my lantern. Um, oh, pardon me. What's your dark vision? It's non-existent. I'm a halfling. Oh, fair. <laughs> Aren't we uh, a great, a great groove? I can see. This was why I, I was like first. torn between being a gnome or being a halfling. Okay. Does gnomes I always forget that halflings get dark don't have vision? That. Yeah. 
Halflings you have get your, lucky. Your halfling luck, though, yeah. 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 No, I, I, I have, have to remember dark about vision. I keep forgetting about it. Yeah, yeah. me too. I have uh, dark vision up to 60 feet. Up to Same. 60 feet, okay. Mm -hmm. what I, I just will... think a Callie's the lightest. What yeah. I can give you all is uh, I'll give you a group survival roll then, sure. in that case. Okay, could be worse. That's a 12. 12, okay. Uh, seven. Uh, can I get those numbers again? Starting with uh, Callie. 22. Okay, I got Lysynthians. Uh, Vistra? 21. Okay, and Katarina? 18. 18, okay, so that's going to be four successes. Uh, as you are headed up the hill, you will start to see the first glow of the dim morning begin to light the side of the mountain. And then a little dust will begin to fall. Hundreds of feet up the mountain, you come to a glistening white expanse of packed snow. You start to pass it. Boy pulling onward. I guess boy's in the front then. Mm, that okay. makes sense. So, boy begins to pull forward. Pulling a gun. Do you have him on a leash or are you just letting him run free? I'm Probably him letting free. him... Yeah. I kind of have communicated of like, okay, okay, stay with us. Okay, yeah, so he rushes him. forward a bit, and you can hear him bark a little bit in the background. Um, thanks, Ryuji. Ryuji gets a credit. Um, <laughs> it's good. It's cute. Um, he rushes forward across this expanse, and as you follow, you get about halfway across. When you hear <sighs> a loud crack higher up in the mountain, followed by a rumbling noise as the ground starts to shake. And have Run! Run! Okay, so what I would need to do is get everybody roll me uh, initiative. Ooh. Crap. Okay. Do, 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 oh, crap. Okay. That's do. not very good at all. That's going to be a nine. Nine? Okay. Seventeen. Se dice. Seventeen. Six Sixteen. Sixteen? Okay. I got a I got a fourteen. Okay. Uh, and boy got a 16 as well. Okay, good. Good boy. Boy, and so that's Katarina, and that's Vistra. Okay. Uh, so as you are rushing forward, um, you can see that this expanse ahead of you, um, directly below the avalanche. Okay. Uh, so Vistra. Glancing around with just the quickest glance that you can, all of you will recognize that Vistra is dead center in the middle of this avalanche that's coming down. It's surging down the side of the mountain, coming like a frothing mug of ale tipped down at you. But this one... No! It's, a, it's just death above you. And as you are there, so um, you... Vistra, you yourself are going to need it to make it at least 100 feet to get out of the avalanche's path. Eek! Callie, what do you do? Uh... Wild shape! <laughs> Grab okay. her and run! Okay, yes. what do you... You get what picked you... up in the jaws of a dire wolf. Uh, yes. what, is your, what is your speed as a dire wolf? 50 foot. <laughs> okay, are you going to do a, a dash action then? Yes. Okay, uh, so uh, quick as can be, Callie is going to turn around, and this as is she a does, large beast. Her neck is going. She to triples in size. Stretch <laughs> out from her shoulders and uh, black white. Um, I'm gonna go kind of that lovely grayish brownish brindle. Ooh, grayish brindle. brown fur is going to erupt out of all of her pores and her body is going to swell. She hits the ground in a full stride. A dire wolf that rushes up, grabs you by the nape of your by the nape, nape of your uh, of your outfit and throws you onto its back as it rushes at a full clip away from this. Um Vistra, what do you what do you do? It's your turn. So you uh, are are you just going to grab on? Yeah, hold on for dear life. Okay, uh, are you, oh, so you? You are going to be passing uh, Boy, who actually has the speed to beat this, thankfully. Um, and Lysynthian and Katarina, you will pass them as you go. I think okay. they have better speed than Vistra does. She's got short, stubby legs. That's true. Yep. They've yeah, got no, nice long, long, slender legs. Uh, I don't think I can carry 
All of them. Can I leave out like a rope while we're pacing them and like throw them a rope? You absolutely can. Go ahead and give me a give me a sleight of hand roll to see if you can do this in time, basically. Alrighty. Are so you hand trying hand to make a lasso or are you just trying to throw them a rope? I am trying to uh I was going I was probably like trying to just throw them the end. Okay, then don't worry about the roll. That's fine. I thought you were thinking like lassoing them. Or well, something I mean, like that. I got a twenty, so if I can okay. lasso. So yeah, you can quickly do that. And uh, who are you trying to lasso first? Who is so the who is the who is like the closest to me in the? Evening? You are going to be rushing right between the two of them. Pick well, one, two, three. Katarina. Okay, Katarina, a lasso is going to whip out, loop around your head, and fall down your shoulders, clinching you at the waist. Whee! Okay. Are you going to drag her, or is you are you just like letting it letting it out as you ride? I guess we're going a hundred feet, so I guess I'd probably like try and like pull, give her like a big old dwarf and pull. Okay, uh, so at uh, the, your your rope is only fifty feet, so at the fifty foot mark, this is going to get interesting. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, Katarina, Katarina is going to go flying through the air. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Katarina, you have a few seconds before that happens. What are you going to do? It's your turn. Um, how close is Lysithian? Uh, Lysithian is uh, about 10 feet from you, probably. Right? I, I, I think that... Uh, would I have enough time to, like, run over and grab them? Be like, let's get out of here! I mean, I'd allow myself to be grabbed, so... Uh, you can, you can absolutely try. Uh, I, I will try. Uh, so you can rush forward, grab Lysithian, and turn... Uh, Express service out of here. Okay, uh, and then are you two just going to take this opportunity to run like hell? I thought we were going to get. Po- uh, oh, oh, the, yeah, them. Well, they only have fifty foot of rope, okay. so uh, this will this will take a couple of rolls real quick. Are you? So, but here's the deal: they have fifty foot of rope. They're running a hundred feet. You guys are dead center. Uh, you can just hold on to the rope and have it jerk, or you can run with them while holding on. I mean, you um, might as well yeah, just run. Run, run with them while we're holding on. bearing down on you. What are yeah. your speeds? Um, Hopefully, this will save you if it catches you. Thirty feet. Mm-hmm. Thirty. Okay. All right. So 60 thirty. Feet. So sixty if you run and spend your action doing it. Okay. Uh, you are going to run as fast as you can, clinging on to Lysithian. What I would like is two rolls, real quick. What I would like, first of all is can you and Lysithian, uh, both of you make me a strength save? Oh, that dice is gone forever. <laughs> that's, that's, that's oh, where is that? Actually, I did lose that dice forever because I got up to the bathroom earlier and it wasn't there. Uh, that's okay. going to be 16. 16, you are going to manage to hang on to her. Okay. And strength, oh, that's no. going to be 15. 15, and you're going to hang on to them. So uh, the two of you are going to cling to each other for dear life as you run and feel the rope around your weight begin to, waist begin to tighten. And what I would love is for Callie to give me a strength and athletics roll using your new direwolf strength. Hey. Twenty. Twenty? Fantastic. You are going to feel a sudden uh oh actually wait, Vistra, this was the just in your, actually has strength. This was just in your hand, wasn't it? Are you tying the other end off to like a round? I was just gonna hold it in the end. Okay, then I need you to make me a strength save as well. Alright. Uh you oh, could also Jesus. use strength athletics if you prefer. Yes. Um that'll be a twenty as that'll well. That'll be a 20. All right, so you'll be able to hold on, clamping your thighs tight around Callie's midsection uh, and basically just burying one hand in her mane. And you are going to feel the rope go taut. Your hand is going to go numb under the pressure. And you, if you weren't wearing gloves, you'd be stripped to the bone by this rope. (sighs) At least it's not the silk. Um, As you rush forward uh there is going to be a moment where the avalanche comes down and what i need as you are being dragged along is i need one last saving throw from katarina and lysithian uh now however this is a strength save uh yeah so this is just going to be a strength save 
Okay. Uh, 17. Hmm. Let's 17? See. Okay. Let's see how bad this is. One, oh. one moment. I don't have... Uh, that's a 10 total. I have no strength. I have little Because you succeeded arms. your roll, roll before, you can roll with advantage because of uh, Katarina. Okay. That's even worse. We're going <laughs> to go with 10. We're going to go with the 10. Okay. Oh, no. Uh, all right. It's so... Fun. The avalanche is going to plunge down, smashing into you. You've almost cleared it, but just not quite. The The snow is going to buff it down on you. And that could be way worse. Uh, Lysithian, you're going to take five points of bludgeoning damage, unless you have a reaction <laughs> spell, um, uh, as the snow just slams into you and buries you underneath I do, but do like... I want to use it right now? I, it's five points of damage. That's... It's five... <laughs> it would be worse, but I'm also a wizard, but I also don't have that many spells. It's up to you. Katarina, you're going to take, take the, two. Th yeah, I'll just take it. <laughs> so having succeeded your save, Katarina, you're going to take two points of damage. Uh, and a moment later, the snow is going to settle. Plumes of dust are still going to be floating in the air. Motes of ice crystals on the edge of this mountainside. Had you not been faster, had you not been stronger, this might have swept you over the edge into your death. No. <laughs> However, now it's just the three of you there. A dire wolf boy who is uh, actually dealing really well with the fact you turned into a dire wolf. Strangely. I'll snuffle uh, him. <laughs> Uh, you will get the body language off of him where he's kind of confused, but you still smell like you, vaguely? I give Keely a little screech behind her ears. Um, your Is companions... Awesome? Your companions are buried. Oh, However, you, you have a tether attached to them. Yes. Uh, you have two choices. You can, you can, you're going to dig? All right. So I would like uh, everyone here uh, to make me a... Uh, an athletics check. Oh, yes, here we go. <laughs> oh, no. Nat 20! Four. Okay, some, someone type crit. Four? Four. Two. All right, both of you, is this what death feels like? You're blind, frozen, clinging on to each other, only the feeling of each other's hot breath pressed against your freezing faces reminds you that you're still alive. The feeling of your ribs swelling with deep breaths. And then you remember, what do they say about avalanches? If you get trapped, you're supposed to breathe a lot, right? It'll melt the ice around you. Yeah, that's right. Wait, or wait, maybe you'll run out of air if you do that. Or, oh God, you can't see anything. Even dark vision fails you with this much. What's that noise? <laughs> Suddenly, a wolf's face, the size of a kite shield, looms over you. And then picks you up and pulls you to safety. Congratulations, you didn't die. Yay! Okay. Hey. <sighs> First wild chip use! Uh, you all uh, actually did very well in that. Uh, you took very minimal damage, and uh, you suffered no exhaustion from this. Good for you. Callie will just shake herself like a dog afterwards. Shake off all the snow. That was the fastest thing you've ever seen. That avalanche traveled 500 feet in three seconds. The only thing faster than that Never mind. I'm not going to make the joke. It's too easy. Um, was Katarina? No. Um, okay. What do you do? No, Catch I'm totally your breath? Galley. Yeah. Okay. Stand there for a moment and uh, just kind of stare out over the, the precipice, which we could have been tossed over. Okay. As you glance over, you do a quick check. With your elven eyes, you can see the base of it now that there's a bit of dim light here. Gives your dark vision that extra bit of length. And as you scan the bottom, even the snow that's beginning to pile up down, you do a quick calculation in your head. You're about a thousand feet up right now. 
there's no surviving that. However, you don't see any trace of bodies down there. That's a plus. They might still be ahead of you. I don't see anyone down there, so before, you know, something else happens, do you want to keep going? Yeah. Keep yeah. on. You push forward. Callie, you find that your new borrowed body is actually pretty good at navigating through this. And you keep a good pace with Boy. The others follow shortly behind you. About 15 minutes pass of you climbing through the snow. When you reach a steep, snow-covered incline, dotted with jagged rocks. Lying face down in the snow, barely conscious, is a humanoid in blood-stained, cold-weather clothing. You recognize the Athletic. jacket. I'm gonna run up to him. Uh, boy charges as well and begins to uh, um, just panickedly lick his face. Uh, medicine check? Sure, absolutely. Give it to me. Can I assist her? Yes, you may. So, uh, you roll, and uh, Mike, hold one moment before you give me your roll total. I was going to say, uh, if I'm assisting, doesn't she roll with advantage, or do you want two separate rolls? Uh, you can just roll with advantage. I think Mike only has the one dice right now, though. Oh, okay. Because he lost one a minute ago. <laughs> so, did you succeed your roll, Isithian? No, I rolled a seven. And then, uh, what did you roll on that, Mike? Um, that one was a... It's actually pretty good. It's a 17. Okay. Uh, so checking him over, you can tell that um, it's Garrett. He's still rugged, still handsome, fairly exhausted, and very banged up. All in all, you think that he's very close to being completely incapacitated. You can tend to his wounds if you like. Um, I'm going to cure wounds him. Okay, so that go ahead and roll that then. That's uh, 1d8 plus your charisma. Uh, d8, d8, d8. Here we go, d8. Um, that is going to be 4 plus, plus charisma. Mm -hmm. So that's 8 total. 8 total. All right, uh, you touch him with the the magic of your song and uh, and your bardic powers and he'll he'll rally a bit more and, oh, that's you guys hey boy welcome back to the land of the living yeah or as close as I'm gonna be mm. I will arf a little in the distance you've caught another scent more humanoids ahead of you Callie he wasn't alone here there are others up here uh, yet he's at him. Oh, hey, you're a big one. Where's Talent. your half? It's Keely. This is that, the that's, that's, that's the halfling. little one. He's yeah. like you're doggy not little grin. Anymore. <laughs> um, Showing oh, lots of big teeth. Oh, yet he surprised me, and uh, and my companions higher up on the mountain. I, I managed to lure it away from the others, and uh, and had it chase me down the mountain. But it, you can see. I guess not anymore. He fingers the holes that were ripped in his ribs a moment ago. Where did he go? Probably back up. Um, it stopped following me a while ago and went up. It was a big buck. Oh. Bull, whatever. Um, a buck, what am I thinking? He's a big bull. Sorry, I'm still a little <laughs> shaky-headed. No, that's fine. Uh, um, Allie's going to arf a little, snuffle the snow, look at them, and go... Callie? Yeah. Make me a perception roll, please, with uh, advantage. Ooh. Just you. Excited. Advantage. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Uh, you are. Um, there is going to be a flurry of motion above you. And one moment. There are five of you. Six with the dog. Uh, Garrett is six. Okay, so one, two, Vistra. And, oh no, boy. Um, oh, actually, wait, boy. Okay. Uh, you are going to notice the exact same thing as you hear a low growl come from boy's throat. And that's the moment where 
something huge and white lurches down, slamming into Vistra. Slamming into Vistra. Uh, Vistra, something immense is going to slam into your back. Uh, I need you to make me a strength saving throw immediately. All right. It is a uh, 14. A 14. That is a success. Um, and that is going to be... So I can't bite you if I've already done that, but you will take damage from the impact. Uh, you are going to take 13 points of piercing... Uh, pardon me. Ouch. Uh, no, you are not. I rolled, okay. the wrong, I rolled the wrong dice. Uh, you are going to take eight points of slashing damage as suddenly over you, this tremendous beast, a large white cat with piercing blue eyes leaps down. Another one dives down, taking, trying to pounce into... Uh, is going to hit Boy in the side and is going to deal... Uh, boy needs to make a strength save. Boy fails. Oh no, oh no, oh no boy. Oh boy. Uh, is anybody going to give Boy their inspiration? Yes. Oh, I was about to, so you go right ahead. Okay. All right, so that is now a success, okay? Okay. Oh, uh, boy is going to take six points of damage as this cat pounces, uh, scratches down his flank, leaving rivulets of blood in the snow, uh, but is not able to knock him over with the impact. Just so you are aware, uh, these are Craig cats. Ooh. Mm, lovely. Ouch. Um, yes. Uh, these Craig cats immediately begin circling and snarling, and I would like an initiative roll off of everyone. Uh, Callie. You may act because you you smelled them coming. All right. Well, I got a nat twenty on initiative, anyways. Okay. So well, you you, a... which ends up being twenty three. Okay. So one. Oh, they rolled really shit initiative. So that's good. Uh, so now, Callie it is on essentially right next to boy. Right. Does boy count as a pack member? Uh, boy does count as a pack member. Yes. Yes. And pack you count tactics, as boys. Baby. Pack tactic is the best. Uh, so, uh, let me just grab initiative first and then we'll hop into this. So, uh, who had above 15? I okay, did. what did you, what did you get, you two? I, I had 18. 18. You, 18 and 18? Eight. Okay, who has the higher dex mod? I have two, plus two. Uh, Katarina? I have, um, four. Okay. Katarina, I'm just gonna do that for now. Then Vistra, what'd you get, Lysithian? Five. Uh, you're not last. That's good. I'll take that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, v Vistra, you probably want uh, Katarina to go first before okay. you anyway. Uh, yeah, so, probably. Yeah. Uh, so in the initial round, as uh, as this one slashes into, uh, into Boy, I want uh, Callie. You may attack because you smelled them coming. Uh, you have advantage on this roll because of pack tactics. Uh, 19 to hit. That's weird. Uh, that is a hit. Sorry, these things awesome. are... Uh, what you'll know about these things, by the way, all of you, you've heard rumors, they are... They cannot be targeted or detected through magic at all. Doesn't say anything about being able just to detect them, but, like, these are invisible to magic. Wow. 15 points of piercing damage, and it needs to make a DC 13 strength check. Saving throw. Oh my god, you won. Okay, go ahead. It's not uh, so prone. It's it's knocked prone. Okay, so that's 15 points of damage? Yes. Okay, so that's well, that's cat one. I so bite that, it. Okay, so you are going to bite it, uh, grabbing one of its legs out from under it and ripping it off its feet onto its back. Uh, boy is... Boy is up and wounded, but he's a good boy. Uh, and is actually going to manage to bite in as well. Uh, boy does 2d4 plus... <laughs> Two, boy does eight points of damage to it as he begins to tear at its throat, uh, getting all of the aggression from his bleeding ribs out. And now we are in normal initiative. So, uh, top of the order, Callie, you are up again. The other one is is next to Vistra, about to swipe. Okay. And it's really close to me still? Uh, they are all close, yes. Okay. I am going to do it again with pack tactics again. <laughs> okay. Uh, so it's basically just on the other side of you, so you're not going to be... Uh, it's prone. It can't attack of opportunity or opportunity to attack you anyway uh, from its angle. So go ahead and make me an attack. Uh, that's going to be... 
24 to hit. 20, that's probably a hit. Yep. <laughs> and that's going to be 14 points of damage. And it okay. needs to make a DC 13 strength saving throw. Uh, now that it did. Okay. It doesn't get knocked prone then. Uh, you are going to grab it and rip its leg. You said 13 points of damage? 14. 14? Okay. Oh, that makes math easy for me because they're hit points in. I rolled four. max damage last time. I didn't quite roll max this time. Okay, so rushing forward, you are going to bite into its thigh a little too high to rip it off of its feet, but are going to come away with a delicious tasting morsel in your mouth. Uh, Katarina, it's your turn. Uh, okay, so with these things being, uh, you can't detect them with magic. Yeah. Uh, how would that affect uh, if I casted Fairy Fire on them? Uh, that's something probably different as far as you know. Uh, you can use your bonus action to make me a quick arcana check. Um, okay, yeah, I will. Okay, go ahead. Uh, that is going to be... What is my... Arcana is plus one. That's going to be a 14. 14? Um, looking at these things, you've heard stories that magic kind of slides off of them. It, it doesn't take very well. Kind of like how it how elves are resistant to certain effects, like enchantment. Okay, you, so out of character, you know that they have advantage on on spell saves. Okay, cool. Uh, that uh, sounds... Unless it's an area, they do not have it on area effect spells. Uh, oh, but fairy... okay. So if you drop like a fireball, that wouldn't help. That they they would they they would be hot, hot cats, <laughs> hot, cats. <laughs> hot cats, hot cats. Um. All right. Then in that case. Do, 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 do. Get some fight I am going, going to. Uh, I'm gonna throw up uh, dissonant wh whispers on. Okay. Oh, okay. There's one that's knocked prone, and one that isn't. Right? Is, just, is it just the two? Uh, one's yeah, it's just the two. One's prone, one isn't. Okay. Uh, the is the one that's prone more. That one's more hurt, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so I'm gonna cast it on that. Okay. Um, uh, and this just targets targets it. Uh, yeah, this is just just targets it. Okay. What's my save? Wisdom. Uh, your save is do 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 do. Whisper save is uh, wisdom. I have a fifteen. Okay. So it's against your spell save DC, which is uh, usually eight plus proficiency plus. So you. you you're pass. casting mod generally. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you pass. So you need to use. So that's half damage. Okay. And you don't. The need story. To move away. Sounds good. The stories must be true because that spell slid off. Seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12. So six damage. Six damage. Okay, uh, uh, it is definitely bloodied. Uh, Dissonant and, whispers is psychic damage. Yeah, it's psychic damage, and uh, it also needs to immediately use its reaction if it has one. It does not have a reaction it can use. Okay. So, um, you are going to see that it starts thrashing its head around as boy is tearing into its chest and neck. Uh, Vistra, what do you do? Well, him attacking me was not there very is. nice. It's true. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to be quite upset, and I'm going to uh, go into a bit of a rage, okay. uh, and I'm going to recklessly attack this bugger. All right, so you'll have advantage on that roll. Go ahead and give it to me. Yes. Good thing I did. They choose an H20. All right. Holy shit. Okay, good. Not 20. All right, All give right. me. Yes, I did. I did. D12 twice, and then add my plus two, right? Uh, that is correct. And your strength mod. Yes. And all my strength mod too, right? Yeah. So I think it's a plus six total. Yes. All right, so that is a 11 for the first 12. That would be a six. So, so then... Si you're at 17. Yes, then a two for my strength mod, and then my... Or my plus two for the mana, and then my strength is plus four. So... Uh, with that wonderful crit, I'm going to ask you a question. Yes. How do you want to do this? Because I know you've been dying to hear someone say that to you in a in a live stream for a while. So how yes. do you want to do this? Well, <laughs> oh dear. Um, I think I uh, want to uh, 
to obviously hit him, um, but I want to hit him so hard that he just fucking flies off the cliff. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so you. I just want to eat him. You just you 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 you, you double. F- you double grip the bottom of your of your great axe's haft, wind up and hit him so hard that you yeet him off the fucking cliff. So hard, in fact, that your axe slides clear through, and it's not until you watch as he flies, uh, as the cat flies off the cliff, bounces off a bit of the stone. Does the rest of the rib cage collapse and it falls in two pieces? <laughs> oh. It, it stays alive long enough to watch its ass fly away from it. Yes. And that is fantastic. It is diggity dead. Uh, boy is going to um, is going to uh, is going to Harriet and uh, Lysithian. It is oh actually it's its turn. Uh, the Craig Cat is going to get up as uh, boy is circling around it, kind of limping on one leg as it's ble- as he's bleeding into the snow. He's going to keep his eyes on it, circling it, keeping its attention. Uh, the cat is going to get up and is going to take another attack. Uh, and is going to miss. It lashes out at Boy's face, but is not able to make contact as the dog deftly leaps back. Uh, Lysithian, what do you do? Okay, um, I'm going to cast Ice Knife at this fucking beast. Okay. Um, is, is does ice knife? You are, can you throw that? Is that so the way? So pretty that... much how ice knife works okay. is I cast a knife. I it appears and I throw it at it, okay. and on a hit, it um takes one d10 damage. However, even if it doesn't hit, the knife still explodes, and that target and whatever target is within five feet will also take damage. Okay. So it's a risky move because uh. Boy is there now, so I'm going to cast uh, Ice Knife. However, I might take the safer bet. I'm going to cast Magic Missile instead. Okay, you cast Magic Missile. All right, sounds good. That Go is ahead an and auto hit. It is an auto hit. That's smarter because that it's hard. It's hard to go wrong with Magic Missile. Yeah, it's magic really missile. this is what it's for. Ooh, max damage. That's going to be max um, damage. Well. Uh, as high as you can get on the D4. It's 1D4 All right, so, plus 1. So 5 damage! <laughs> 3. Oh, Magic Missile sends out multiple bolts. Oh, it's 2. It's 2, isn't it? It's, so. it's 3. It's, oh, it is 3. I know how yeah, to read. So it's 3D4 plus, uh, 3D4 plus 3. Plus, yeah. Here, I gotta take off my glove here. To okay. Be able to pick up my D4. You can just roll these D8s and divide it. Yeah, I know. Alright, so. Or D12s and divide it. Four. Or D20s and divide it. Seven, eight, nine. Or D100s Maniac. and divide it. I'll be 12 points Maniac. of damage. 12 points of damage. All right, let me echo what I just said to your friend. How do you want to do this? Um, I'm going to just pulse out my hands and shoot off rays of purple looking magic. <laughs> and it's just Harriet, just all in like all in the neck and within the rib cage, and try to uh, use the force of my magic to try to uh, throw it off the cliff. All right. Womp, 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 womp. You feel the force move through you and then feel the force move through this Craig cat as it yeets it over boy <laughs> who ducks down to let it to give it plenty of velocity uh, and it tumbles over the clip screaming and yowling as it descends into the depths of snow cat hell. He'll be honest. I did want to try and pick one out in my jaws and like just shake it. We'll, we'll flick it off the edge of the cliff. <laughs> just eat it. Your that wasn't same. my mind when I was first doing it. it. Was like if I get a critical, I'm doing that. Send these things yeah. to Jotunheim. Jotunheim. It's Jotunheim. 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 That's good. I like that. I like that. Okay. Um. Uh, poor Craig lost both his cats today. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Craig. There's a moment. It is of- Craig's list. Oh, sorry, we start the ducking at the same time. I was going to say it's Craig's list, but just for cats. Anyway, continue. There's a moment where everything is quiet, and then uh, 
boy is going to limp over, still bleeding a bit into the dirt, uh, up next to Garrett, who's going to squat next to him and start trying to patch up the bleeding wound at his side. You okay? Are you okay, buddy? Oh, strong boy, strong boy. Do, do any of you have any supplies or anything? Uh, that's up to Katarina or, uh, Callie. I don't really... D- d- just, just some rags or anything. I can, uh, I can try to... I'm going to, uh, just tear part of my, like, poncho. Just tear, like, the front off and... You're gonna be okay. It's not that deep, buddy. It's not that deep. Come on. Does All anyone right. have any healing spells? Uh, Are you going to use it on boy? I'm also a little hurt, but like, I could probably maybe least another encounter, but uh, I did also get a little scrape on that bloody kit. Or we can wait until I fall over, but... Look, um... If I'm looking low, I'll wait. I can wait. If if you're all feeling up to it, Garrett says, the rest of my expedition's still up there. I can stay with Boy down here and make sure that I get him patched up. But if you can go up there and look for the others, um, I, I don't know what else is up there. I know there's at least one Yeti. Um, but I also know that um, Mokingo Growling Bear, um, my uh, a Goliath, um, Perilu Fishfinger, uh, a Halfling, um, to, uh, she's a cleric. She might be able to help if we if you get her. Um, and Asterix, um, uh, a, a tiefling. I don't know much about her, but she, she she swears a lot. You might be able to hear her. Sounds like a tiefling. I can shelter here with Boy for a bit. Yeah, you okay. you you rest, rest and take care, of Boy. We'll go get your 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 expedition. You guys are heroes. Allie will just shrug in her dog in her dire wolf. Dog shrug. Okay. We'll be back. All right. So hopefully, at this point, looking the way ahead of you, you can see that zigzagging is your only way up the mountain from this point. Clinging to narrow to narrow ledges and scaling up icy cliffs. Uh, what I would like you all to do is, I need you to make some group. Strength athletics checks. And what I'd like you to do is let's do one right now as a group. Ready? Uh, your difficulty is 10. Strength plus athletics? Strength and athletics, yes. Well, that's a five for me because I have a zero. So, that's okay. a hi one. guys. It's really been nice knowing you. That's a nat 20 for me, though. It's a nat 20? Yeah. Okay. 17. 21. I think we passed. Okay, your first pass. I need you to make me another roll. What you're going to do is three of these in a row. 18. 16. 16? Okay, one, two, and then... 19. 19, all right. Second chest passed. Uh, What would have taken you about an hour if one of you had messed up? Make me one final roll, and then I'll ask for the numbers in a second. You begin scaling the side of the mountain, zigzagging. As a dire wolf, it's a little easier for you. You're able to quickly move around the edges. But there are a couple of times where, uh, Callie, you have to rely on others to hold you from certain angles Mm. so that you don't accidentally tumble. You climb a rocky ridge, and Lysithian, you were feeling pretty exhausted at first, but now you're starting to catch your breath and really work into this. This is the part of the climb that you can do well. Final roll, results. What'd you get? Callie. 21. Lysithian. 16. Katarina. 5. Vistra. I rolled a net 1, but then that's a 7 total. <laughs> this is not going to go well. <laughs> okay. I'm going to um, use inspiration. You can use inspiration if you'd like. I'm going to use inspiration so I don't fall down the main. If you, if you roll another 1. Nah, it's a, it's a, it's a 17. 17. All right, Katarina, this shit, you're done with this shit. (laughs) However, with your party, you are able to press on and you come out the top of this not being very exhausted at all. Looking down the zigzagging corridor of ice and snow and steep death that you could have tumbled down. 
You realize now that you work pretty well together as a team. If you didn't, that would have taken about three hours instead of the one that it took you. Okay, so it did take an hour? It did take about an hour to get up. Allie pops out of wild shape. Okay. It only lasts and an hour. With that, uh, why don't we, if you have if you have it up, we're going to switch over to roll 20 because directly in front of you oh. is a frozen, icy cave. And uh, Robin, I know you've been having some difficulty with your computer. Uh, so if you can't load roll 20 you can just watch the twitch no stream I've, had, I've had i've had roll 20 up the whole time it's fine with roll 20 yeah okay. all right uh directly ahead of you up to your left is a 15 foot high 10 foot wide cave mouth there's blood on the snow some distance from the cave entrance what do you do um i'm going to in go and investigate it just okay make me an investigation roll please Callie's gonna redo wild shape. <laughs> okay, what do you are you poof saying? Out, thing? Poof back into a dire wolf. Uh, investigation. Okay, with investigation, that's going to be eleven. A quick check of it. It's old, but it's the same color as. No, this is Garrett's. As you look down, you can actually see a little sliver of fabric there in the matted blood that matches his clothes. This must have been where he was wounded. Okay. Wow, he must be pretty tough to make it down the mountain that far. Uh, what did what are you doing, Vistra? Um, sorry, I was, I was trying to get it to load up. I am so sorry, I missed that like zone. I was trying to get to. That's totally okay. So there is some blood that Lysithian is investigating. Okay. Um, can I also go look? Sure. Um, as you approach them, you'll see what they're looking at as well. It looks like this is probably where Garrett was injured. Uh, there's okay. a little bit of little bit of fabric from Garrett's um, Garrett's outfit there. All right, so let's turn up the icy cave music. There we go. All right, uh, so you all should have. Oh, let me move boy because boy is not here, and let's move to our map screen. All right, so uh, as you all approach, you will see that there is uh, that blood stain that is probably Garrett's. Up ahead of you, you can see that the cavern goes a bit deeper. Do you proceed? E okay. Yes. Um, carefully, probably. Right. Would any? Would you like to be stealthy? Yes. I yeah. Personally... Okay. All right. So everybody here can make me a stealth roll. Oh no. Oh no! I'm not stealthy at all. Me neither. <laughs> okay. Not too bad. Not too bad. Uh. Oh, never mind. Uh, uh, 15 with uh, my modifier. 21? Nat 20. Okay. All no, right, you so have dice that are. 24. All. Magic. Uh, are those, are you using the ones that we got from ice cream? No, I am using my beautiful new ones that I bought on my birthday. Oh, nice. Birthday, birthday dice. dice. Birthday dice. As you head forward, you can see that there is a large chasm directly ahead of you. The cave here has a... So you guys can move all the way up to here if you'd like. Oops. The cave in front of you has a 20-foot high concave roof. Most of the floor has fallen away, forming a chasm 80 feet deep. All that's left of the floor is a rocky ledge connected uh, here by a stone bridge. A one-foot thick sheet of ice spans the southern part. Which way do you go? You're moving really quietly. Um, I'm going to sneaky sneak along the, the rocky bridge. Yeah. Hmm. I'm going to rocky join, bridge. join her that way. Please. Okay. Pressing forward. Can I get a perception roll off of all of you? Sure. I'm assuming you're actively listening when you're in this type of situation. Oh, yeah. 18? Yeah. 18? I'm way too distracted, to be, not one. Uh, 15. Okay. 15? And uh, this is hearing based, but actually you'll be able to smell as well, so do this with advantage, Callie. Yeah, I. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, unnat 20. Unnat 20. Okay. 
It's great. I gotta pick and choose which stats I use. Mine are the wolves constantly. Nice. Nice. All right. As you as you head north, you'll find that directly in front of you is a room filled with bones, large bones, humanoid. The creature that died here must have been at least seven feet tall. Bits of flesh mm. still cling to the bones. The head has been ripped from the shoulder, mm. gnawed, and stuffed into a niche dug, dug out in the wall. Lovely. In the distance, you can smell something. Something furry, something hairy and odorous. But the rest of you don't. What you hear is a soft whimpering and the sound of impact like someone striking a rubber ball hmm. or a punching bag. Hmm. <clears throat> Are you stopping to look at the bones here? And feel free to move your figures up, by the way, guys. There we go. Yeah, take a quick examen. A wolf is just covering everything. Okay, so... What you'll find, you don't need to make a roll for this because it's actually pretty easy. Uh, amid the bones and torn bit are torn bits of hide armor, a great axe, and the skulls and bones of three mountain goats. As you glance along the walls, you see that seven other crude niches hold frozen heads. Heads that were decapitated in a similar fashion. One. Two of them are dwarves. And I'd like anyone here to make me a... Uh, just roll me a d20 and tell me what you get, given your time in town. 19. 19? 14. Uh, okay. 17. Five. Uh, five? Okay. You have no idea who either of these are. Um, however, the rest of you are going to recognize, uh, first, the dwarf that called out, Hey, it's time to get going. That's, you think that's them. Oh, but the other one, the one that you'll recognize there, that's Ubok. A dwarf from Brinshander. You don't know what he would be doing here. I mean, apparently nothing anymore. No. What does Callie know about yetis? Uh, you How can make... scary is this? <laughs> uh, you can make me a knowledge nature roll. Or your knowledge... Yeah, it's, it's going to be knowledge nature, even though it's a monstrosity. Anybody can make this roll, by the way. 23. 23. Okay, not bad in this uh, knowledge or nature roll. So like an intelligence? Yes, it is. Uh, so it's going to be pretty good. That's an unnatural 20. Perfect. Uh, so what you two will know automatically is that yetis are, they're large, evil creatures. They are very dangerous, uh, very strong, and have the ability to chill someone's blood with a gaze. However, they're not without their weaknesses. Although they blend into snowy environments quite well, they are naturally afraid of fire and are, are quite vulnerable to it in, uh, well, at least psychologically. However, um, cold magic is useless against them. They're completely acclimate, acclimatized, acclimated is the word I was thinking of. They're completely acclimated to the cold. What do you do? Around the corner... Callie, you're pretty sure you can smell one. Callie's gonna look at the others and kind of go, like, look at them and then kind of scratch it with her paw. <laughs> Yeti. Oh, Use oh, fire. I'm gonna light a torch. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to, Ooh. for as soon as I see a Yeti, I'm going to uh, have a witch bolt prepared. Okay. I have a plan. If I, if I, if I, like, hold a reaction, you know, I don't know. Yes, you may. Yes. Okay, so you have uh, witch bolt reacted. And what's yours, Vistra? 
I'm going to chuck, I'm going to light my torch and then I'm going to hold the bottle of oil in my hand. Ah, and I'm yeah. going to, yeah. Okay. And uh, what about you, Katarina? Um, so I am going to, uh, I'm going to give a bardic inspiration to okay. probably the big bad wolf. Okay. All right, BB. Yeah. All right. What yeah, does that do so again? You have a D6 to add to any roll. Um, and you can add it to any roll, I believe, before I tell you if you succeed or not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sorry, any d20 roll. It can't be added to damage. That's okay. a different bard college that allows that. Okay. Our giant hairy companion's gonna ruin their giant hairy day. Okay. Are you saying this loud? Quietly. Okay. <laughs> it, was, it was worth asking. It was worth asking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Quiet bard. Quiet bard. All right. Oh, Who Allie's is. Ali's gonna creep up to the corner to look around it. Okay. And you had a good stealth roll before, so we're going to keep with that. Yeah, I was going to say, this is going to get ready to lack. Huck, as you, huck our oil bomb. As you step forward, you can see that the floor of this cave is five feet higher than it is there. There's a soft slope, which gives you plenty of room to crouch down and look up over. The ceiling ranges from about 10 to 20 feet tall. The floor drops off sharply in the south, which probably would have been a way to reach there over that ice sheath. Ice sheath. And you notice a strange sight in front of you. An adult yeti sitting at the back of the cave, watching over its child. A small yeti tyke. It's playing with a lightfoot halfling dressed in cold weather clothing that's curled up in the fetal position, rushing around like if it was a football or soccer ball, <laughs> kicking it against walls. Uh, and just because they did a fantastic job, one moment, guys, because I know you want to see this. Uh, who wants to see what a baby Yeti looks like? Yeah. Yes. That's what I That's both adorable and fucking Ooh, terrifying. That's just creepy. Yeah. It's I was chasing a rabbit down. Cute. It's, really it's beaties. Like, it's really cool. It's really, it's really cool. Yeah, You need to really keep cool. a teeny. All right. Uh, oh, so, directly in front of you, uh, you can see this. Um, she, the halfling, is whimpering slightly as she's kicked. The Yeti, although about the size of a human teenager, isn't particularly strong. Well, not as strong as what well, you'll immediately recognize Callie as its mother right behind it. Oh, crap. Uh, what do you all do? I'm going to attack the mama. Can I get yes. an initiative roll from everyone? I, while what are... Uh, like looking at each other to prepare. I'm pulling a small twig out of my bag and tucking it under my hand to keep to uh, cast Witch Bolt. Okay. Because I said that was my reaction to seeing it. You yeah. Did? Okay. Uh, and that's a 19 plus 3. Uh, 22. 22. Did anybody beat 22? No. Nope. Okay. Okay, Lysithian, you are first. Uh, who is above 20? 19. 18. 19. 19. Uh, 18. Okay, who had 19? Both of you? <laughs> Again. Uh, Again? We just so in sync. It's true. Cat. That was. Ba, ba, ba. I don't know what that was. It was in sync. I was singing. Thank you. Only hit a little. Good okay. Good uh, so. You do you all you all turn to each other, and uh, begin to rush into it. No, Callie just leaves. I'll say try and okay. I'm going huck my to fire and torch. Just um, launch. Just dart my hands forward and cast witch bolt at the mama. Okay. All right. So we're gonna go down there, Lysithian. Um, Callie rushing forward is going to be all the notice you need. Uh, you are all going to have a surprise round. So we're just going to go straight through the initiative order. 
Uh, so, Lysithian, roll first. Uh, it is surprised. Ooh, that's so... good. That's a uh, 19. Uh, 25 to hit. <laughs> that is <laughs> definitely a hit. Go okay. ahead and roll and me damage. Note about the Witch Bolt is that on each of my turns, as long as I keep concentration, it keeps doing that d12 damage. That sounds great. Okay. Okay. Uh, eight. Okay, that's going to be... All right, uh, eight points of damage this turn. Okay. And there's no save on that because it's a hit, right? So. No, it's not so. a spell save. Nice. Okay, hold on. Let me just pull the... Make sure the tyke is ready when you guys decide to kill it, too. Um, okay. It did, yeah. Um, Katarina, at the back of the row, what do you do? Uh, you see Lysithian rush forward and fire a bolt of arcane energy out of their hand. All right. I am going to cast fairy fire on it, on the, the Yeti. Okay. Does um, it get a save for that? Uh, any creature in the area when the spell is cast also outlined in light. If it fails, a deck save throw. Uh, I failed. All right. So I... you are outlined in a violet light. Okay. Uh, Vistra. And, oh, sorry. Uh, uh, so it says each object in 20 foot cube within range is outlined. Any creature in that area is. is uh, so you can outline the tyke as well. Okay, yeah, I will outline both the yetis. Uh, the tyke is actually going to get a 20 on its save. Oh, okay. So, so the, just the mom. Just the mom. Okay. So that is done there. And is that your whole turn? Um, I that is a full action. It is a full action. Okay. Uh, would you like to grant bardic inspiration to anybody else? Oh, I can. Oh, yeah, I can do that more than once. Every, every round, yeah, you can do that, and uh, you can do it a number of times a day, equal to your charisma, I believe. Yeah, I can do it four times a day. Um, so yeah, I'm going to. Um, I'm going to grant a D6 to Vistra. All right. Oh, thank uh, you. And regale her with a song about how she's going to kick the crap out of this thing. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, play with the tyke like a soccer ball. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Vistra, it is your turn. What would you like to do? Um, so as a question for the DM, because again, surprise round, is that like the same as just a regular round? Like, can I bonus action and? Yeah, you can. Basically, they just don't get to act this round. Okay. Um, so again, how would if I'm gonna like huck both the the torch and the oil at the same time? Would that be kind of like a double it'll, weapon? It'll, it'll basically be the same same thing. I'm gonna. Yeah, would that count as one attack or? Uh, this will count as your as your attack for the round. Okay, so then I can bonus action rage again. Yeah. Okay, sweet. I'm gonna do uh, So what this is going to be is it's going to be a. Um, I'm gonna say this is a dexterity attack though because it's a little finessey. So that would would that give me advantage with my danger sense or no? Uh, it does not. However, the mother is outlined with fairy fire, which means oh, that you yes. have advantage against using that on her. Okay, so I just do a regular, and then just add my. So you use your dex instead of your strength. Okay. Not as nice. Well, you still have advantage. It's true. Um, so it would be a thirteen. Thirteen is going to be a hit. Sweet oh. is. All right. I uh, so uh, you are going to throw the flask, which is going to splash all over the eddy, and then throw your torch, which is going to ignite its fur. Uh, that is going to deal. Oh, improvised weaponry. Improvised yeah. weaponry. Okay. Uh, it is going to take three points of fire damage as it lights up, and it is going to start shrieking a high-pitched terror noise. Uh -oh. All right. Uh, and Callie, you're up. What do you do? Um. Okay. I am going to come over and attack. Okay. Uh, you can't occupy it square, so move back one. Well, I mean, it's hard because the wall's right there. Okay. All right. Go ahead and make me attack roll. Um, technically, you know what? She can't act to be your ally, so I'm not going to count the halfling as your ally for pack tactics. Hey. Um, that's going to be a 22 to hit. That is definitely a hit. Roll me damage. And... Oh, wait, and I have... 15. And I need to make a strength saving throw. I got a 14. Okay, 
succeed. Okay. So you are going... How much damage? 15. 15. Okay. She is on her... Well, actually, she is bloodied. Uh, rushing through, you're going to bite into the meat of her thigh and start stripping it off of the bone. Uh, and we are back at the top of the initiative now. Uh, Lysithian, you are up again. Go ahead and give me that damage roll. Okay. That's a 12! Okay. 12 uh, points of damage. 12 Stuck points of damage. <laughs> that is fantastic. Another arcane bolt. What color is it? It is all purple. All An of my ar- magic is always purple. Of course. An arcane, a different shade of purple this time. More of a Samuel L. shade of purple. Motherfucker. <laughs> Just slams into it. You can even hear the sound of one of the gods going, Motherfucker. Um, the gods of magic, that is. Uh, Katarina, you are up. Um, okay, it is time to go swordy sword. Okay. And rapier this thing. Okay, um, which one? Uh, mommy. Okay. All right, so that is going to be... Uh, What's your armor class? Armor class 15. Sounds good, go ahead. Uh, that's going to be 22 to hit. 20 dude hit's gonna be successful. So go ahead and move. If you're going swordy sword, you need you to move up to her. Right there. Cool. Uh, uh, oh, actually, technically, you're not out. You haven't left. It's only when you leave a threatened area. So yeah, never mind. The, the yeah, tyke I'm, doesn't get a swap a swipe at you. Yeah, I'm in it. It's square. Yeah. So that's great. Uh, oh. So that is definitely hit. Roll me damage. All right, so that's gonna be woohoo! Yeah, I love it when I roll max damage. Um, so that's uh, eight. Uh, what do I add to a sword attack again? You add dexterity or strength. I would add dexterity if I were you. Yes. Yeah, so that's gonna be twelve. Did you roll a d8 or an eight? A, a flat d8. Eight? I, ro- I rolled oh. a ma- I rolled max. Oh my god, you are going to leap forward and plunge your blade directly into this beast's chest. Blood is going to start welling down around it, and as it is still on... I have to actually roll to see if I'm still on fire. Uh, I'm still on fire. Uh, And with a puff of smoke, uh, black smoke will actually begin to roll out of her mouth as she snarls at you. As the fire begins to go inside of her lungs as she breathes deep to roar <gasps> and is going to collapse dead next to you. Vistra, you're up. Good job, guys. Uh, I'll go get the tain. Uh, oh. And so I will take it in my swing of my eats. Okay. He's lit yeah. up by fairy fire too. Uh, no, that one is not. No, that one's not. All right, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna take recklessly, because I don't okay. think he's gonna make it through this round. I I really don't think so either, actually. Well, especially when I do another uh, another crit. <laughs> this poor child. He. Look at the massacre, my boy. He's uh, but he's he's he's, he's hitting that halfway round. So uh. That's true. Fucking. All righty. So, since I'm raging... He's had a good a good life at the ripe old age of seven. Yeah. I mean, they age faster. So. I don't I don't feel bad. And because of that bad juju, I got a one on my first d12. Okay. Rude. That is rude. Rude. Oh, but then I get a 12 on that next d12, so there's not too No, 12? Okay. Yeah. Um, do you mind if I just narrate this? Yeah, go for it. Uh, it is going to turn and shriek at you. You can see it's starting to get up from where it was kicking the halfling, looking like it's about to run, trying to figure out which way. Its mother's just dead. There's a giant wolf there. There's a woman with blades and another creature throwing lightning across. It shrieks and turns right as its head rolls across the floor, your axe cutting cleanly through the sinew and bone. Sexy. And with that... It's quiet again. The halfling will slowly uncurl herself. Who are you? Friends. I'll say. 
I'm I'm Perilu. Did did Garrett manage to get help? Are you the help? He's yeah, we're the help. He's he alive. The uh, He's with the boy. He's going down to back down to the base camp now. Are you boy okay? Came, boy came and got us. I'm I'm okay. I'm a little bruised up, but honestly, I'm fine. I'm just exhausted. What about your friends? Yeah, where's the rest of your party? The Tiefling and Mo, Mo, I saw them kill Monkingo. They mm. they. St- God, they ate him. Um, Anyone else? I I don't know what happened to Asterix. Um, I'd love to find out. Um, um, One moment, please, while I double-check where this is, because this doesn't... Maybe it's on the... It's probably on the map. She was, she was a little further than me. I'll go with you if I can. Sure. What can you do? I don't have much juice left on me, but I've got probably um, a light spell and uh, one healing spell. Are any of you hurt? I'm, uh, I'm all right. Maybe you should use the healing on yourself. Like I said, I'm just exhausted. Which of you looks the most hurt? Um, I'm 13 out of 18 hit points. Okay. I'm 21 out of 29. Okay, well, cool. he's taken no hits. <laughs> uh, she is going to approach, um, and I guess that means Lysithian, uh, Lysithian is probably the the worst out of all of you. Or is it Vistra? I mean, I have more hit points to start. Okay. So like, uh, go heal so, Lysithian. Um, she's gonna approach you and uh, may their light shine down upon you and cure you of all that ails you. Uh, you're gonna heal ten points of damage. Oh, wonderful! That brings me to full health. Nice. Thank um, you. You didn't have to do that. You didn't have to do this. Thank uh, you. Y- it was fun. <laughs> you were sick. Uh, I'm just exhausted. I've been getting kicked around by... That's unfortunate. But... I would have grown up to be a monster just like its parents. It's not their their fault. Uh, they're born... monsters. We're just in their territory. It's It's just in their nature. But I am sorry what happened to your friends. Is anyone looking around the room? Yes. Yeah. Callie's gonna start like okay. snooping. Investigation uh, or perception? Don't worry about it. It's, it's visible in here. It's too stark oh. white to not see it. Uh, as you say that, Lysithian, she'll smile and put a hand on yours for a moment. Still, death is never something we should look for. I'm very happy to live through this. Um, and looking around the room, you are going to see the shattered remains of a dog sled. Um, and underneath it, a mess kit, an explorer's pack, and two outfits worth of bloodied, ripped clothing. Uh, you're welcome to go ahead and take the explorer's pack and uh, mess kit if you'd like. I'm going to grab that explorer's pack. Sounds good. All right. Um, now, if I can be so rude, can we get the hell out of this cave? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. please. Um... I'm going to sort of stay back a little bit while the others go forward and just kind of my eyes lingering on the yetis a little bit. Okay. I'll make start making my way out of the cave with the, the halfling. Okay. Go ahead and you guys can move yourselves to uh, to the bottom here before well, so I, while I load the other map. Okay. All right. Oh, no. Just uh, please up here. Oh, okay. Well, I guess the... Yeah. All right. Uh, as you are lingering behind, oh yeah, I should also move move her. Uh, so she'll be right about there. Uh, as you approach the edge of the cave, can I get everyone here uh, to make? Actually, one second. Uh, make me a perception roll. Okay. Unnatural twenty. Unnatural uh, 16. twenty. Sixteen. Eleven. Twenty-three. 
Oh, it's just not right. seeing shit today. Uh, as you step out into the the dimness of the of the oop, there we go uh, of the twilight uh, the twilight day, uh, you are going to hear the sound of crunching snow above the cave, and then a tremendous roar as the bull leaps down onto the ground. And can I get an initiative roll off of everyone again? Oh. oh. <laughs> Yes! Uh, Less good. Uh, it's an 8 this time. Okay. Alright, anybody 21. get above 20? 20. 21. 22. Holy crap. Vistra. Uh, then Callie. Alright. 20. 19. 18. 17. Uh, well, actually, hell. Uh, what did you two get? Lysithian, what did you have again? 8. 8. And uh, what did you have, Katarina? 7. Okay. Uh, Vistra, did you see, what'd you get on your perception roll? <laughs> Eleven. Okay, so you will not be acting in the first turn. No. Uh, it leaps down on the ground, and, uh, Callie, you did succeed, so go ahead and, what do you do? I'm gonna leap at it. Okay, so go and ahead. I make... Vistra's right next to it, so that gives me advantage. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Woof, woof. Woof, I mean, yes. did you get a nat 20? Yeah. Yes, Callie. And don't forget that both Callie and Vistra have do have the Bardic Inspiration dice still. Oh, I do. Yeah. All right. Callie, I failed my strength save. Okay, you're knocked prone for sure. Uh, Callie leaps forward in her dire wolf form, catching the Yeti by the ankle and ripping it off of its feet. It tumbles down into the snow, and she deals with it. Me. What's a myth? Apparently. 27. 27 points of damage. Uh, it is bloodied. 27 at level 2? Damn. Well, the, with a crit as a wolf, right? Oh, yeah, that'll do it. Okay. Uh, I'm the, a wolf. Uh, the Yeti uh, oh. snarls oh. up at you, and I need you to make me a constitution save. Let me just check what the wolf has for that versus mm -hmm. me. I think mine's better. Uh, 18. Shit, okay. Uh, so close. Uh, it's going to snarl at you, and uh, you are going to be unaffected by its chilling gaze. Um, as that happens, uh, you're tearing into it. It's going to roar. Uh, it is going to spend its move action to stand up. And that, what's your armor class? Is it 13? Uh, no, 14. As a wolf? Damn. Yep. Dire wolf. Yeah. Okay. Not a wolf, um, dire wolf. Uh, <laughs> he surges forward, swinging a clawed hand at you that is going to miss. Uh, but the second one is not, and it he is going to clamp his clawed hand over one of your ears. You are going to feel the eardrum almost rip. Uh, as you take eight points of slashing damage and three points of cold damage. Okay, one sec. How many points total is that? Eleven? Eleven. Yeah, sorry, I was trying to remember what I said first. It was eight plus eleven. Eight and, eight and three. Sorry, eight plus, eight plus three, yeah. All right. Uh, Lysithian, you are a bit further back in the cave, but you will hear this noise and can move forward. What would you like to do? All right. Um, I'm going to go all the way forward. Um, oh, gosh. What spells do I have? How close are you, uh, Kali and Vistra? How close are you? To you or? To the, uh, to the Yeti. Vistra's like, within I'm five feet. Okay. It. That's all I needed to know. So instead, I'm going to, um, do I want to do this? Is it holding on to, uh, Callie still? Uh, like, so it's holding on to her ear? No, it basically just clapped it. Oh, okay. I was very confused. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, going to witch bolt it because this is pretty, uh, Yeah, pretty there good. probably aren't very many yetis left on this hill, so go ahead and probably do it. Probably not. All right. 
Oh no, it's my last spell slot too and I rolled a two. I'm gonna use my inspiration for her. Oh, but I, for, no, for I, I do have a point of inspiration. You do, oh, do still? Have okay, so, so use your own. You should just, you should just do like the cross teacup drinking for each other. Take mine, yep. oh no, take mine. Okay, uh, uh, it's going to be an unnatural 20? That's definitely a hit. Okay, uh, Okay, take a d12. D12. Anyone. Any d12 will do. Any d12 will do. Uh, Any d12 rolled off my will desk. do. <laughs> it's okay. gone forever. Okay, uh, six points of damage this round. Okay, that sounds great. Uh, it, and that's purple it. energy smashes into its frame. And Katarina, it's your turn. Um, A rapier is going to come okay. flying out. And... You're going to step forward? I'm going to step forward, and that is an unnatural 20. That unnatural 20 is going to hit. Are you using Are you using a rapier and a dagger? Oh, I can use both at the same time? You can use the dagger as your bonus action if you haven't used... Oh! Yeah. Cool. I'm going to do that, too. Cool. You don't uh, add your strength or dexterity to the damage of the second weapon? Okay, but I still add my dex to the attack. You still add it to the attack, yeah. You okay. add the you add it to the damage of the primary, but not the offhand. Okay. Sixteen for the dagger. That's a hit. So go ahead and roll me one d eight plus one d four plus your dexterity mod. Okay. All right. So that's gonna be uh, four, five, six. Uh, that's ten. 10 points of damage. All right. Um, you slash and stab into this tremendous creature and Vistra uh, directly next to you. This Yeti is snarling and being stabbed by your compatriots or ripped apart by magic or teeth. What do you do? I'm gonna, gonna swing at it. All well, right. Eeks, uh, now, are you, are you tired? Can you, do you still have any rage left in you? Nah, not okay. unless are that you... was less than a minute. Uh, no, it was, yeah. it was a little more than a minute. Yeah, so now yeah, I'm not raging. Okay, and you don't, are you suffering exhaustion from that? No, I am okay. not. No, that's a, that's a specific that, rage Yeah, that's, that's the pain, I think. That Sorry, I, I haven't played a Barbarian since Pathfinder, so I'm still, like, yeah. in that, oh, then I have, like, a two-minute cooldown. I have a refractory period before I can get the rage up again. Nah. Okay. She, she, she can just power through. Okay, good. Yeah, you can just power through it. You're... Like when you're when you're an old barbarian dude, it takes a little while to a little longer. Yeah. 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 All right, so I'm just gonna attack. The trick is in all the pre-fight action, right? Exactly, all the pre-fight. That's where all the fun happens. <laughs> all right, cool. Can we convince, I don't think we can convince Amy to blue herself. <laughs> you wanted to what herself? What? Blue. Blue. Blue, blue. herself. Blue. Yeah, Hayden. Oh, Hayden no, blew I, themselves. I love yeah. it. All right, what'd you get on your roll? I haven't rolled yet. Oh, you guys all making dirty jukes. What's a dirty juke? It's in this end. Did you get a crit? Is, is it the one? You you do. Oh, uh, 20. 20. You, you got a oh, 20 okay. again? Yeah. And roll me damage. Fantastic. <laughs> well, I switched my dice up, and then this one likes me a lot. If I can find my fucking D12, that would be grand. I just hit it. There it is. Eight. And another eight. And then a be six. So that would be 16 plus six is 22 damage. All right. So, Vistra Dankill. Yes. How do you want to do this? Um, so, are we outside of the cave? Or are we still inside? You are right the in cave? the mouth of the cave right here. So, is there a cliff behind me? Uh, there is not. There's a, there's a ragged... Um, a ragged stone wall behind you, basically. Okay. This cave is kind of like in a in an outcropping between two bits of stone. Okay. Well, again, I'm I'm willing to roll like an athletics roll as well to Ed, but I would like to uh like to like jump behind him and just like slam my hammer in, or my axe into the back of his head. All right, you're gonna embed it back into the back of his head and open the back of his head like a can opener does to a can of tuna. Yes. The gray matter is going to pour out and with a gout of blood striking and steaming against the snowy earth, the Yeti bull is going to fall dead in front of you. And with that, it's all over. Well, 
Good luck. Yeet. Bit yeety. That was very impressive. Oh, hold on. I gotta... There we go. Sorry, my camera wasn't loading. All right. That was very impressive, the halfling says. Um, I guess it's just, just right up that hill. As you step forward, you head further up the hill. You come to the edge of a vast and deep crevasse, with nowhere to go but down. A collapsed tent lies half buried in the snow near the precipice. Jutting out of a nearby snowbank is a pair of blue leather boots. Next to this grim display, a figure in cold weather clothing sits in the snow, her knees pulled in tight to her chest. Horns protrude from underneath the figure's fur-lined hood. And they did fantastic art for this, so I'm actually just going to show you guys. This is the scene you come Ooh. across. Okay. The halfling is going to fall to her knees and just... She looks pale and exhausted. She's not damaged, but she's just done what do you all do do you go and search the bodies uh yeah well, the, is, the, around. is the tiefling dead absolutely she froze to death up here oh um go investigate yeah investigate looking around um blue boots those are blue dwarven boots right there they don't appear to be magical, but they're quite stylish. And all of you who are... Actually, all of you would have heard... That was a dwarven explorer named Barthum Hammerholm. As you poke around in the snow, you can see that he was decapitated. His head must be one of the ones lining that alcove. Do you pull him out of the snowbank? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you can take the boots if you want. There's nothing special about them aside from they're kind of cool. Um, you'll find an empty wineskin, a half-eaten block of goat's cheese, and a miner's pick on his body. Uh, does anybody go and approach the tiefling? Yeah. Okay. Uh, frozen up against her body, you will find the following. A potion. Obviously. Uh, obviously such, with a, with a label on it that actually describes what it is. It's a potion of invisibility. As well as clutched against her chest, between her knees and her now frozen breast, a leather-bound spell book. Ooh. Lysithian, you, you grab that. Uh, I'm Lysithian. going to just like, look at the halfling and look for her confirmation before I take it. She'll nod. Do it might as well go to someone. You, you saved me. Looking inside, you'll see that it has the following spells. And I'll send you this after game if you need it. Alter okay. Self. Cloud of Daggers. Comprehend Languages. Detect Magic. Expeditious Retreat. Scorching Ray. Shield. Suggestion. And Tensor's Floating Disc. And I will send you those after game. Yeah, I was like, just send them to me. And with that, you manage to catch your breath for a few minutes. Do you do anything or begin the climb down? I'd like to find a way to sort of lay the bodies like to rest or sort of do something like make some sort of makeshift graves for them. I don't think they deserve to be just out in the open. I agree. I, I can do last rites. Uh, sure. I am a cleric. Ali will nose over and start digging into the snow for them. Okay. You take some time digging their graves. When they're laid to rest... Let's see. When they're laid to rest... Perilu 
follower of Yondala, the halfling god of fertility and protection, says a prayer and insists that while you were burying their graves, you also went back and retrieved uh, Monkingo, Growling Bear. I wanted to have gone down and got the other, the others okay. as well. Garrett will come up and say a prayer as well. I think by that point, Callie's going to come out of wild shape because that's probably been about an hour. And <sighs> happening again. After putting them to rest and taking a few moments, Garrett looks around the scene here. It's going to be too treacherous to climb if we don't do it quickly. We could stay here tonight and shelter in the cave. It should be safe enough and Yeti's there's unlikely to be others on top of the cairn right now. Or we can risk it. What about the other dogs? We bought, we rented some and then yours are down. They, they were okay. They broke into one of your crates. Thank God. All of them actually. Did you give them any food or anything on the way up? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You fed them. Yeah, they should be and fine I, till the I morning. I let them They'll... loose so they could get away if they needed to. They'll probably complain at us when we get down, but they should be fine for the night. A okay. little bit of a hungry tummy never hurt anybody for one day. Or we could risk it. We still, ha we still have about two hours of light. What you guys going for? What do you guys think? I'm all out of spells. Yeah, I'm Perhaps I'm out of spells. But I'm all out of magic for the day. I'm tapped. I, I don't... Hmm. How long do you think it would take to get down? Mm, we'd be doing it in the dark at the end, but we'd be doing the bad parts in the light. I do have the ability to cast light indefinitely. So, and we so would have I. visibility. Paralu? What you going for? I'm not exactly sure. There, were, there was a lot of talk. I was just hired as a survivalist. Uh, Paralu? Uh, one moment while I double check what they were coming for. Boop, 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 boop. We were coming up here for, for him, actually. She points down at the grave of the blue boots. Did someone take the blue boots? No. Okay. I left them. Oh, okay. I was going to say if no one else wanted them. All right, you can take them. We were coming to look for him. We were coming to look for him. Was he someone dear to you? A famous explorer and a friend. We were also looking to see if there was any treasure up here, but apparently the only thing we'd find is death. Well. At least Monkingo went out the way that he would have wanted to. I'm going to put my hand on her shoulder. Uh... She... Are you going up the rest of the way? Uh, she's going to have a little bit of a breakdown on your hip. No. Just hold her. If it's all the same, I'd rather get home to the dogs. Just in case you... there are any yetis at the base. Probably I, I think the I think getting down would probably be a better with a better option. The last okay. thing we want is an ambush, and I do not have the ability to cast an alarm spell. Good. Well, let's get going then. Sure. With, with that, it does take you into the early night. You'll head down, and it's with Garrett at the lead. He is quite the survivalist, and is able to give you advantage on all of your rolls on the way down, so long as you take it slow and steady. Boy is feeling a little bit better, and... Um, the cut on his side doesn't look like it'll become infected. You make it down to the bottom of the mountain. 
finding the rest of the sled dogs there. By the time you get back to... Uh, back into town, it's almost sixth bell. And as bad as the... As bad as the watered down ale is, the story of your survival, the story of the tragic expedition, buys you many, many pints. But that's a story for next time. Let's stop game here, and we will pick this up next week on Monday. So, hey, thank you so much for watching, everybody. It's been great to have you along with us on this adventure. You guys beat... you, Vistra, you kicked ass tonight. I'm so happy. <laughs> and, Christine, you got to experiment with Wild Shape. I got you to like it? Werewolf. I got to Rapier a Yeti. I mean, how often do you get to say that? Were you... Mike, were you with us? You were with us in Steep Hollow when we fought Yetis before. That's right. Yes, yeah. That was but fair. And I Lys didn't Rapier one there. And Lysithian, you are not a prickly cactus. You are actually a really sweet person, we are discovering. I think that's great. It's true. Character growth. Character growth. I really want to say that I I really enjoy running this game for you guys, and I hope that you enjoy uh, having it run for you. You guys have fun tonight? Yeah. Oh, it was super fun. Nice. Uh, now, I... I said amazing. That's oh, I thought, you said, I thought you said I mean, and I was like, well, go on. Uh, let's let's let's, <laughs> oh, let's hear what you say. Oh, shit! Ah, damn, my Yeti rolls were shit. Oh my god! <laughs> I actually want to have like I, I really just want to have a game where like a giant blue Yeti shows up and is like, I have an affordable microphone and <laughs> abominable microphone. Abominable. It's you know it's fine. It it it's a good entry level. Um, there there's better, but like you know it works. Um, so I'm wondering, which of the following quests are you most interested in going on next? Because uh, that will help me prep for next game. I've got them prepped, but I'd, I'd like to know in advance. Are you more interested in, there could potentially be a quest in Kerr Koenig that's pretty cool. Uh, which would have showed up if you had uh, been around long enough, but you we didn't have time. Uh, you can go and escort him all the way back to Targus. Uh, but to be honest, he has his own sled, and once he's rested for a day, he, he can probably do it himself. Yeah, I think he's probably yeah. okay. He's an expl he can do it, and then he'll just pick up your reward later. Uh, you can go to Care... Uh, Dineval? Dineval. Dineval. To go to Care Dineval and look uh, into the castle there, because it's on your way back, you might as well. Mm. Um, or you can go all the way back to Bryn Shander and do that job. So what what sounds like the right order for you? Because like Ker Ker Koenig, uh, the plot there's kind of cool. Actually, all three of these plots are really good. So I don't want to tell you which one to do. I had a list that we made. Please. I can probably drop voice voice, but I'm having too much fun. It's okay. Uh, oh, would you, so you want me to join you? Sure. So okay. I had listed that we would go to Brinchender which we mm -hmm. did. Uh, okay. Then we would go to Goodmead. Okay. Uh, then we would go to the castle. And then Lonelywood to look for the white moose. Oh, yes. And, and then we would finish off in Thermaline, looking into the closed mines. But that is the list that I made last game. Yeah, that was so, before yeah. we got sidetracked up into... Yeah, that's, the... yeah. Garrett. that's before we did other things with Gerrit. So... I mean, I'm intrigued are... to hear what is in Kerr Koenig for potential because... Yeah, no, uh, the, uh... So I'll give you a quick hint at what it is. Okay? Um, which is... I kind of want to see what Mark has. Mild spoiler. Um, so just basically, I'll just, I'll just hint at what's coming. Uh, so at one point you'll be approached by someone who will offer you a quest to look into local thieves that have been stealing things like the magic lantern outside of the inn you're staying at. And maybe that will spiral into something bigger. Okay. Um, it's a good. Actually, if I was going to suggest, both of the cares have really good plots. But I'm to be fair, been very interested in those two. Yeah, but the the, the secret cult tiefling thing with the lost son is definitely. But yeah, also this that's... new one that we don't know about. So. Oh, it's been on my brain. 
as I told you before game, and um, so you, you all in the audience didn't hear it, basically, um, the book assumes that out of the 10 introductory plots that you have, one for each one of the 10 towns, uh, you'll do about five. Um, you stop gaining levels after the fifth one. So you've got at least five adventures you can go on. With You can go on six, but you just you won't advance anymore until you go on to the main plot at that point. And I'm assuming we've done at least one already. You have done Bremen. one. No, pardon me, you've done two. You did, yeah, uh, did the, the, the lake monster yeah. and this one. And then this one. And this one would yeah. be Targus as well. Yeah. So you've got three okay. solid more that you can do for sure. So we I, could do I both was thinking of the, the cares. Both of the cares on Bryn Yeah. Yeah, I want to do the cares. And then... You yeah. definitely want to do Bryn Shander. It's the one they want you to start out with in the book. But we started I really want to do it because it's Mark. Mark, Mark. yeah. Um, no, we can do more than that. Like, um, so you can do, we can, we can do an extra session of just going around and doing some fun stuff, uh, that before sounds, the plot kicks up. Nice. Yeah. That could be yeah. fun. Like just not bothering with travel time, just saying we do it. Yeah. And go and check do... out the moose and that sort of thing. Cause yeah. I'm very interested in this white moose and the mines. Those are like two things. <laughs> the mines. Sound yeah. fun. Kobolds. I want to just do those Fucking regardless. Kobolds. Put six They're... kobolds in a parka. Mwah. I'm this in This is... It. <laughs> This and is a, just like pfft. this is a really good book uh and i would strongly suggest what i'm what i'll do is i will double check all of the care plots and if i if i find that one of them isn't as good as the other one i'll i'll find a way to subtly hint at you and be okay. like hey may, maybe not that one actually if you want to do the moose this is the moose is more fun uh actually i gotta read the moose to make sure that it's not more fun um it could just be a fluke. Who knows? Uh, but this is a really fantastic book. If you've been watching us play the last uh, th two and a half sessions, um, thank you for sticking with us. And give us a follow on Twitch or a subscribe on YouTube. Or hell, a subscribe on Twitch if you want to. I'll take it. Um, and uh, we're going to be running this thing all the way to the end. So it's fantastic having you with us. We all love you. And we will see you next time. Goodbye, everybody. Right? Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.